We got a Photoshop you without What's happening, yo? I know. <laughs> the Miss Billy <laughs> Radio Show is going to go live. You heard me. Um, we in here. It was a woke con to get in here earlier because it was woke they woke. Um, that's the man Brian's right there. What's happening, Brian's? How you feel? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Everyone watching it, have y'all seen Black Panther yet? Comment below. Comment Watch. below. Let us know what you think. I'm ready. What's up, Jocelyn? What's up, Paul? Hey, What's yo, up, make Aaron? sure you share this video. 504-260-9265. Give us a call if you want to talk to me. I have a, uh, have an announcement. I have an announcement. What's up, Deidre? We're not giving nothing away today. Because <laughs> that's when he was calling. We ain't giving nothing away. Tune in now to Misbelief Radio Show. WPOK. WPOK 12. Guess what? Radio. Oh, shoot. Sure. Wow. What's up, Cheryl? Seven to nine, bitch. Ha ha. I'm on when he ready. Whenever he ready, I'm about it. Just calm down. No. No. Jessica, would you Did like anybody share from the misbelief page yet? I'm going to do it. There it is. Uh huh. Welcome to the concrete jungle. Damn, my little I say what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, y'all? Welcome to the Misbelief Radio Show, live on WBOK AM 1230. This is a show where we as young black creative millennials highlight the city of New Orleans through our young black creative eyes. By the way, I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio with no material on Vimeo. Slim waist, baby face, deep voice, number one choice, and the hardest working man in New Orleans show business. I'm claiming it. I got some credits to claim it, you heard me? And as always, I keep a cool, colorful cast of creative, cool kids cruising right along with me as my co-host. <laughs> Who's this colorful character to my right side? Look at that! Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? The one and only... Oh, shoot. Sure. Wakanda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, if you're listening on, on the radio, I suggest you tune into my Facebook Live so you can see all of our behind the scene antics. My name is DC Paul, but the, this video is also shared from the Misbelief page. Oh, she don't look like uh, your queen to be. Wakanda, yeah. <laughs> She's wearing the dress she wore on Thursday to, a to, the, uh, to the, the Black Panther screen. And we're going to talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But uh, first, who's this colorful character to my left side? Bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships because they knew that death would be better than living in bondage. This is M. Tyler Bats Bradford, <laughs> also known as Mr. Bats, always coming with the rawness of Lawrence and the swagger of King. I'm the only Martin you need for that 2018. This is Mr. Bats, that actor guy, the handsome Robert Townsend, coming with that Wakanda millennial shuffle. Was yeah. Okay, so I uh, see so you want you want to have a battle of the of the taglines, huh? You want to? You hear me? Okay, that was creative. Who is that to your left side? And she better come hard with it. <laughs> no <laughs> pressure. It's Jay still keeping it real, making you feel all kind of things, eating all the steak and lobster, and coming for the kill. And I never freeze. Oh, oh I never that. freeze. Never freeze. Right? <laughs> I appreciate that one. And who's that we got in the booth? Cool Slayer! And I never be Oh, yes. Alright. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. This thing the second time around. When she said it, it was hard. When you said it, I was like, my nigga, she, she, she said that right. <laughs> anyway, y'all, uh, yeah, give your ring the bell. Man, uh, we got a really good episode for you guys. John LeCarbier, aka Mr. Lava Lamb Wazay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lava Lamp Wednesday. Lava Lamp Wednesday. Lava Lamp Wednesday. He's in the house with us and just tuned into the Facebook Live because Miss Lava Lamp Wednesday is also in the house rocking the Lava Lamp Wednesday. Also, Miss Black Jacket is here too. Black <laughs> Jacket. Yay, Black Jacket. As well as Jay Booker from Crowns Corporation. She's going to tell us about uh, a rally they have uh, for, for the youth. They do something, I believe it's across the river. <laughs> I believe, I believe it happens across the river, but it is a. Why it you is gotta a, say it like that? It's though? a field day. I mean, I felt like too I, early. I, we just start at seven oh one. All right, it's all right. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Can we unpack Thursday night? Mm. Ah. Now we're not gonna we're not gonna unpack the movie just because I don't know who's listening, who's watching, who may not right. have seen the movie by now. First? And really, if you ain't seen the movie by now, shame on you. Shame. Um, but can we unpack? We're gonna unpack our experience okay. from Thursday night. It was everything, right? Everything. So right. if y'all don't know, Juan Lafonte, he bought out originally one to watch the Black Panther for free. And um, tell them what happened. And so many people showed up. It was so popular that he had to end up buying out a second theater right across the hall from now because he, he has he wants to accommodate all the people. And he let us, the Misbelieve, broadcast live. I was not only on the radio um, from 6 to 7, but also the Facebook Live from 6 to 7. And we had a little red carpet situation. A little red carpet situation. So during that 6 to 7 red carpet situation, we got to speak to who? Big Frida. Big Frida. D1. Mia X. Yeah. Mama Mia. Mama Mia. Uh, who else came through? The girl from Fat Fat and all that. Yeah, um... <laughs> I don't, don't. Say her name. Don't. You, now, you, you, you checked me for not knowing who she was. And right, then, and I was like, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, my well, girl. And that cool, oh, that cool ass old man that work here that knew everything. About <laughs> yeah. Oh, John Slade. John, John Slade. John Slade. Who, uh, Bruh. He's usually on WBOK uh, from six to seven, I believe, Monday through Friday. So that was his official time slot. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that he's a comic book nerd, so right. he did know everything. He about brought the joy out in me. He was so excited. <laughs> I was re excited. Yeah, I, I was like, like yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's gonna be yeah. you. That's gonna I be know. Years, man. He was so. He, he don't have your the swag of Lawrence and the. the the, nothing like King, but, <laughs> but he was he was something he was like passionate. you, man. He was, he was quite passionate, man. But That's he like was what? the cutest thing. He was. He was like, yes, you guys. And did you know? And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> like, no, nah, we know that one. And I know it. All that we knew, he knew a whole lot more, man. But there was it was a, such a good night. The movie was amazing. It was everything that I could have asked for. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I ain't, if you had anything else to say about it, I'm not interested in hearing it. Mm -hmm. like it, was right. a, it was a great, amazing movie. Mm -hmm. We'll see it soon. Uh, hopefully, not even a movie. So actually, we won't talk about the movie but specifically. If you, but if you tune into the Fly with Bass podcast, I believe mm -hmm. they did a review on it. That's flywithbass.podbean.com. Yes, me. Yes, me, the Coon Slayer, Raheem Glaspie, and Alpha Joe did a first take, full blown spoiler review. Check it out on the Fly with Bass podcast. We went in. If you already seen it, if you already seen it. Go check us out. Otherwise, yeah, go see the movie. It was wrong with you. And guess yeah. what? I listened to it Friday when I was at work. Joseph was so into it. Like, I sat next. The way we had to sit in the movie theater, it was kind of wonky. Yeah, it was but weird. Yeah. We ended up sitting two by two, like on Noah's ship. So, <laughs> <laughs> me and Joseph was sitting next to each other. And when I tell you, Joseph, eyes never left the screen. And I would turn to my left to look at him, and he was just like, oh. <gasps> And, and and that it shouldn't have. I right. remember when we first got in there, we all these badass kids behind us <laughs> yeah, kicking man. my kicking my damn chair and driving the piss out of me. But then when that movie hit, quietness. When I'm Everything, everything they just except, watched. except for that Slurpee. It was a kid on the back room yes. that had that Slurpee. Oh. Yeah. And they were trying to take it down to the last drop. I'm like, what <laughs> child is this? Please get your child before I snatch them and this Slurpee. At least buy them a refill. <laughs> Right to the point. I right. wasn't necessarily feeling that. I would. I, I look forward to previews. I do. No, 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 no. For this, for this special momentous occasion, no, it was perfect. But to go straight to the movie. Right. Straight. straight. I guess straight because yeah, I guess straight. it was a, it was, well, a, it was, a, it was a premiere no, screening. No, no, no. But next time I go mm -hmm. see Black Panther, and I will go see it a second, yeah. part, probably a third time. I'm gonna be looking for them for them previews. I do like to get excited well, about what's coming next. Yeah. Because I mean, then you're gonna see it as a civilian. So then you're not gonna see it as the millennial Arsenio with no material on Vimeo. You're gonna see it as Darren Carcom. I don't so, know. So. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't know if you know how this works, but I'm always. always. You know, <laughs> can, we, can we talk about how awesome y'all look? Like we and you Yeah, you actually Everybody you was so beautiful. tune into the Facebook Live and share this video because this kimono she's wearing right now, this uh, this Kente cloth kimono, okay. she it had a wrap up as as an actual dress, dress on Thursday. Thursday. It was beautiful. And when I, the black people there, uh, people, man, the people we dressed down for that one. Yes. yes. When I say they showed up and showed out, Mastermind came through with the, the gym bait. It was throwing we, rose petals. He had a big old purple. He had a three piece shirt, the pants, the shirt, and the head on, didn't he? Yes. That was just a thing that I like to wear. But we couldn't even see the pants. Yeah, yeah you couldn't yeah, even yeah, tell. You like, was giving me every bit of I'm here to see the Every bit of Zamunda Wakanda. Oh. <laughs> Baby, brutal. we look so good. So look. If you haven't seen the movie and you want to get um, one of you want to get Flywood Bats take on it, check out the Flywood yes. Bats podcast available at flywoodbats.podbean.com. Uh, what other podcasts are we are we checking out? Uh, the True Literate Podcast, True Literate. Uh, Your Thirty Podcast. We'll figure this out. We'll figure this out. Podcast, the F What You Heard Podcast, the Three The Hard Way Podcast, yep. the Brooklyn Ladies of Therapy Noir Podcast, and. Uh, Black Guys Next Door podcast, Metal Handle God podcast. Well, I think Black, Black Guys Next Door is on pause. On pause? Right? All right. Yeah. And I think that's all the people that we've shouted out, the fellow millennial podcast. I want to say this one other thing about Black Panther. My favorite part, that my favorite part of the experience was after the movie was over and everybody was leaving, you dig? This little girl went, man, mommy, mommy, my favorite, my favorite character was his sister. And the mama said, oh, the smart one? And she said, yes. She blew up glowing. Me and me and Jay still was looking like, I, 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 Jay, I said, Jay, so you heard that? I'm like, that was just a beautiful moment because especially like I know for me growing up, you don't see when when have you ever seen a black woman or a black girl in a role like that? Mm -hmm. Like a scientist, playing a young, adventurous, crime fighting hell. Like Oh, yeah, she was bad. She was amazing. And then all the other women. He could not have been who he became without the women in his right. life. Yeah, you need true. to see yeah. this movie. You heard that? <laughs> so, don't 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 point at me. <laughs> Don't pray that me. I understand the women's in my life. Yeah. And, there, and there's one, and there's this one. I'm going to code it the exact way Chadwick Boseman coded it in The Breakfast Club. There's this one particular conversation being had in this movie with that, that is about the black community and, and our heritage, I will say, that needs to be had and has never been had on this level in film. That's one of the main key reasons y'all need to see this movie. Correct. Right. Without yeah. spoiling nothing. Yeah. That's what it is. All right, yeah. well, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Play some songs. Uh, if y'all didn't know, the Misbelieve Radio, we don't play commercials. Instead, we play music by local independent artists. Mostly independent. Mostly. Some of them ain't independent. But local artists, um, most we can. And um, mm -hmm. if you want your music, your radio-friendly music, played here on the Misbelieve Radio Show, email it to us at themisbelief at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We'll put it on the playlist. Sanitize that as, as long as it's clean, as long as it ain't got no F words in it, we'll put it on the playlist whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Mastermind, what you got queued up first? Uh, I got a local, possibly independent artist. <laughs> Brown, 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 yeah. Andre, yeah. Tell us Andre Brown is experienced, y'all. Stay tuned to the Misbelief Radio Show. Um, and when you're eating your crawfish, don't get nothing on you. <laughs> Life. What's happening, y'all? Oh, speaking of don't get nothing on you. Christopher Stewart said this is amazing. Thank Watch you. Huh? This is the sound. What's happening, y'all? <laughs> we got a whole studio full of people. Introduce yourself to the Facebook Live. We got, we got what? Who do we have here? Marina. Uh, Marina, All right. aka Black Jacket. That's Black Jacket. <laughs> uh oh. And it's Jaleesa. Check out the check out the Lava Lamp onesie. Come she through. actually repurposed it. It's a sexy bag. All right. Uh, it's, it's almost an Afro book on it too. Day is and that's Mr. Misogynist himself, John L. John McCarvey. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I followed them all the way here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Can't call in the whole So what, what were you actually thinking when the video was going on? Was uh, What was going on in your mind? Making fun of men. Cat call women. Yeah. In New Orleans. Basically, uh... Doing exactly what everybody was outraged about because you know, I was making fun of them myself. Um, but instead of uh, instead of throwing all of that uh, negative energy, I just kind of like created that mirror of them and uh, let everybody else see what they wanted to say. I had to say. Uh, I think more importantly, what was on your mind? 
that's the truth. Well, we were on our way to Endemion, and he was getting on our nerves. We just kind of was ignoring him for a second, and then he started doing the cat call, and he just decided to play along. So I was like, let me grab my friend. And so the whole time, we were really, like, our faces in front were just, like, dying laughing the whole time, and everybody thinks we were probably, like, disgusting. But we all know each other. Like, right. we're all really, really good friends, and they're actually together, so, like... I mean, it's just funny, all the different narratives that come out of stories, something like it's funny, yes. some people are really upset. Yeah. Do any, does, have, does anyone know it's you guys in the video? There was one person, one of my coworkers, who knew the Afro Okay. And texted me and was like, is this you? I've had like three people do that. But most people, once they find out it's me, it's like, yes, <laughs> you. love a lamp onesie. <laughs> Interesting. And where, where... Did you get the lava lamp onesie? Well, this wonderful right here was a gift. Oh, come on. It's from my mother's friend. Come on, mama friend. <laughs> Around Christmas time. And when oh, I got it, I said, well, this will be perfect for Christmas. Also, awesome. I wonder if there's like an increase in sales <laughs> of so. onesies that look like a lava lamp. I would love to do a lava lamp onesie in North <laughs> Photo shooting session. Miss Mac, they are here to tell the real story. They are here to tell the real story and a little bit more, right? Yes. A little bit more. Awesome, awesome. What's your, uh, your can I ask you guys this love story? How do you guys meet? <laughs> How did you do that one? Was it the same way? Did you holler like that? I don't have to be open a can of worms. What happened? He's in the corner like the Blair Witch. Oh my God, a Boston blusher. Is he blushing? Oh man. Did she holler at you? What happened? I'm intrigued now. I'm curious. I'm just going to put it this way. She was gifted to me. And he was only going to give you the best. And that's, 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 that's the, the best story. way to put it. Facebook Live, if you have a question for them, please <laughs> let us know. If please you want to go and purchase a, a perfect lava if, lamp one day. Yes. So, body suits, you need a dancer. Well, I should. Yes. Come on. Yes, come through. Please hit me up. Come through, model and behavior. Letter I, letter M, Jaleesa, J A L I S A, Roberts, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Because I need some more dance moves. I hear that. Uh, and if you have any black jackets that you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to talk style my hair and apple toast. Marina Giselle, M-A-R-I-N-A, J-A-Z-E-L-L-E, and you'll find me. <laughs> don't look at me. She's right there. No. Actually, you don't yes. have to look too far to find us. Because on Thursday, this man right here. Come on. Will be hosting an open mic, word connections, at the three phones. On yes. Well. Come through. Course, so she's not just a lava lamp onesie wearer. She's a singer. <laughs> she's a singer. She's an artist. She's a dancer. Singer, dancer, model, educator, business owner. Investor. And this man is just not just a hollower. Oh, no, he I'm is not, I'm not a hollower at all. all. He was doing <laughs> commentary, yeah, but I he's was, really a poet. I'm a poet. I'm a uh, dean of students at a high school. Tell him. I'm not saying what high school. Um, <clears throat> I'm a photographer, a uh, graphic artist, uh, I do a little bit of everything, I cook, I clean, Come on. I'm a He's all of that. Come on. Yeah. He's all of that. Yeah. 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 Yes. Right Girl, you got your whole team over here, girl. For real. Tell them what you do, Tell them what you do, Quinn. Not just a black jacket wear. Yeah, no. I'm not just a black jacket wear, I'm actually a biomedical engineer. Co <laughs> <laughs> Almost dropped this thing, what? Let him know. So, that's say it again. Do. Just say it again. I'm, I'm a, a medical engineer. Come on. Yes. That's amazing. This is beautiful blackness right here. So. That's amazing. If you see her, please holler at her. And do not make the her mad. The future is good. She might have a bomb. I got a squad right here. So that's that's yes. Yes. Real. Awesome. 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 <laughs> yes. Look, take a look Young at her. black and talented. Now, for and anyone who hasn't seen the video, where can they go to find it? Well, they can go wherever they want because I actually, really? I actually got tired of the comments on my page, so I okay. took it. I, I didn't take it down, but I just only made it available to my friends. Okay. So, it's on. Mine. But it's on media takeout now, yeah. so if y'all. It's on media takeout. It's, it's on all over my Twitter too. What was the thing you just showed me? I don't um, know. It's like a lot of different people yeah. are reposting it, so you, you can find it on the internet. It's and, viral. And it's on my page. And if you want to help people. 
who are not watching this understand the real story, then feel free to go to on me to take out and tell them the real yes. story. The real story. There's a lot of different stories. narratives for that story. Really? How how mind blowing is that for y'all? That is something so random, like maybe like what was maybe thirty seconds of your life, right? Yeah, yeah. it was, it was, it was, it was very random. Good. Like and, you know, the crazy part was I did it. I recorded it what what this was a, a Saturday, and then me on Saturday, and I didn't post it till Valentine's Day because I forgot. <laughs> I saved it in my Snapchat. Like it was on Snapchat, and you know nobody paid attention. Nobody commented on Snapchat because it's all people you know, <laughs> and they know I'm joking. But yeah. once I put it on Facebook, you know a bunch of people laughed at it, shared it. And then they caught fire somehow. Yeah. Cause you did. <laughs> you just yeah, know what you did. Yeah. 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 But uh, is with that, 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 is that, that, that album. But with that story, you know, I felt like you know it was, now it's my responsibility, along with everybody else that was involved, to uh, shine a little bit more light on the actual thing that had everybody like kind of like up in arms. Yes. Cause I, I wasn't mad at them when they commented, but uh. I would rather them, you know, seek all the information so they can properly defend women. Or, at one point the video had a donation button for yeah, exactly. um, women and children shelter. Awesome. And so there were all of these comments. You had an option for those yeah. comments that you gave out. All right, guys, I'll be right back with you guys. Did y'all have a good conversation with Mr. Mr. Lava Lab one thing? Oh, that baseline. Wait, ooh. Oh, oh, hey, Mama Shirley. How's your Ethiopian family? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I mean. right. And we're back. We're back, y'all. Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show. We're live on WBOK AM 1230. Or... You're listening on www.wbok1230am.com. Or you're listening to us on our podcast, available at themisbelief.podbean.com and on iTunes. Or you're watching us on my Facebook Live or on the Misbelief Facebook Live page. What's going on with this mic? On the Misbelief Facebook Live page, because uh, we go live and uncensored every episode for the whole two, two hours. Oh, man. We had a black station where the microphones don't always work good all the time. I'm just it, just it, being real with you. Or, or if you're listening on the WBOK app like I believe my mama does out in Dallas. Shout out to my mama. Hey, mama, she listens faithfully every Saturday night. So, shout out to us. Oh, by the way, uh, my name's DC Paul. I'm the Millennial Arsenio. <laughs> <laughs> and who's this to my right side? He is so <laughs> lame. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me, the one and only Queen of um, Wakanda, now Ocean. All right, you think you're Angela Bass all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> she, she was everything. Uh, and who's this to my left side? It's the handsome Robert Thompson. That actor guy, Mr. Bats. Handsome Robert Thompson. Yes, who's at yes, his left yes. <laughs> it is the queen, the goddess, Jay Steele. What's up, Jay Steele? Keeping it real? What's up? And who's that in the booth? <laughs> yes! 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 Keep it real. <laughs> uh, Mastermind, what's that, uh, the last song you played? I remember Ari Jackson. She came through here a couple weeks ago. She performed that song a cappella with her two background vocalists mm -hmm. right there in Studio 1234. It was dope. Um, check us out on the podcast. Check out our YouTube page. We have all of our past episodes and some exclusive dope-ass live performances that you really want to catch. We've had a lot of great performances. Mostly. Grand like, majority yeah, of Like Shagadelic, uh, when he was here mm. a few weeks ago, he did his thing. Erica Falls, mm. Flowers. Erica Falls mm -hmm. did her thing. Um, uh, Karen Green. Karen Green. Oh. Yes, I wasn't even here for that one. Yeah. I watched Green that was one. Amazing. I had to go back and watch that on the she video. Was you could feel it through the video. Mm. Um, so if you guys stay tuned and you watch the Facebook Live on this episode, uh, Mr. Lava Lab Wednesday is going to show you <laughs> that he's not just a misogynist pig, but also a very talented young man. But up first, our first interview guest on this episode of the Misbelief Radio Show, make some noise for Jay Booker. Hello, hey, hello. Hey, get the clap, get the clap for the man. <laughs> Jay Booker of Crowns Corporation, JB. How you doing, Jay? I'm fine, how are you? Good, good. Uh, we always ask all of our first guests on the Misbelief Radio Show the same question. You know what a misbelief is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little secret. I, 
I have learned now to ask people before they get on the air if they know what it is. <laughs> because we've had so many people on the air just be slipped up and confused. Thinking, I think that's the best. I don't think, think you should so? prep anybody. <laughs> but, 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 they, they always say the same thing, and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> we can, then we could do a counter of how many times people give that answer. True, oh we can. That's <laughs> okay, all right, next time I ain't going to prep them. But you're familiar with the fruit, the misbelief. Yes. All right. Yes. What you call it? Where you from? Japanese. Japanese from? Right. Where are you from? Harvey. Wah, wah, wah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you born and raised in Harvey? Harvey, Mororo. That's cool. That's what's up. Um, you are the, what are you, the creator, the CEO of Crown Corporation, CEO, JB? Yes, CEO of Crown Corporation. Tell us some more about your, about your organization. Um, It is called the Coco Foundation. Coco stands for Crowns on Cups Off. So it's geared towards underprivileged youth. What we do is organize events in the community just um, to give the kids something to do. Because a long time ago, we used to have a lot to do, like stuff to do, YMCA. You know, we used to have boys on the basketball courts actually playing basketball. Kids outside riding bikes and, you know, it's like, just where video is games. it? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like if we had more things to do, then maybe... We wouldn't have so many of our, you know, sisters and brothers in the streets. All right. So, so that's just... Y'all encourage your kids to be more, more active. Yeah, get outside and play some games, interact with each other. You guys do basketball, yeah. table tennis, dodgeball tournaments, track and field races, bingo games, mm. spelling wow. bees. Okay, I'm glad to see spelling bees on there <laughs> because uh, you got to encourage not just the activity, but yeah. the mental activity. Right. Um, local dance parties and so much more. That's what's up. You guys have a, a location? No, right now we don't have a facility. Mm -hmm. So what we do is partner with other recreational oh, parks. Oh, I see. That's already with, like existence. local park schools mm -hmm. and right. restaurants. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's what's up. How long have you been doing this? Yes, yes, yes. We actually just started. Like oh, wow. this Saturday is going to be our first event. It's going to be um, oh. in LJ's. Oh, and so we got exclusive, park. huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to say you just started. Your website looks nice. Yeah, thanks. Nice. Uh, so I guess, I guess. This had to have been a passion of yours before this became an organization of yours, right? Uh, yeah. So, what are you? Are you? Uh, are you a former athlete or something? You, no, you I'm not. Active? You can you cross no. me up on the court? Okay, <laughs> no. well, what? Nah, I can't do that. Nothing like that? Uh, no. Actually, I'm not. Not. I wasn't really too active. But you better I, be active nowadays. When I you're mean, get these yeah, kids. I have. Yeah, I, I have two kids, so I have no choice but to be active. But right. um, I didn't have the opportunity to engage in extracurricular activities. Because my mom couldn't afford that. So, and there's a lot of people now that's in bad situations because, you know, their environment is negative. Mm -hmm. So they can't, and, and that they come from, you know, one parent households or, you know, low income households where their parents can't afford this. So they have no other choice but to be in the streets or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them that could be playing basketball, could be playing sports, you know, could go to better schools, but. We don't we don't have the funding for that. Mm, cool, so that's right. something else that we want to implement. You know, we're gonna try to raise money to provide finances for you know the kids to um, participate in extracurricular activities. I was gonna mention your funding. I see you have a donate link on your website. By the way, the website is crownscorp.org, mm -hmm. right? And people are able to to, to donate these. Is this yes. all community funded so far? Yes. Okay. Cool. So no community funded. I have a board. You so my board, board, yeah. Okay, <laughs> come on for the board. board. She said, she said, nah. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, no. So yes, yeah, so this would actually be um, a fundraiser, basically, because we're the money that we do get from these events, we're just putting it back into creating more events or better mm -hmm. events. You guys have like instructors for, like, let's say, um, you're doing something uh, like a physical, a physical activity, like table mm -hmm. tennis or regular tennis, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, I, I'm just a guy who's never been exposed to tennis before. You guys have instructors that are there to like mm. to be my, my you first. You wouldn't say that. No, no? Okay. I know we not we not at that level yet. Okay, we just we probably all probably gonna be beginners, so we just learn as we go. I guess. Oh, I hear that. I hear that. Cool. Before we have to pass the mic to my, my co-host, I see you also have a beauty academy attached to Crown uh, Crown's <coughs> Corporation, right? Mm, yes. Yeah, so I am a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor. Mm. And I am in the process of building my own cosmetology school. I see that. The Luxury Style so. Full Service Cosmetology Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I like yeah, that. Yeah, you got a nice. fancy. 
I see you you team master too, so you can you do locks and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like you. Y'all watch on the Facebook Live. She yeah. just shook her locks, and it was all type of black magic. I got a little bit of jewelry in there, some shells. I see you. Yeah, like I see you, Jane Booker. What y'all got? So, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you find the kids, or how you reach out to kids outside of the website? Like, what do you guys go through to um, target these children that probably need going to the community? Going to school in two different apartment complexes. We're going to where we're not going to neighborhoods that look like they could donate to our, mm-hmm. you know, to, okay. to our um, organization. We're going to where we want, we want to change lives. We're going to the neighborhoods where we're going to actually help somebody. And how's the reception been so far? It's good. I would say it's good. I mean, because I'm working so hard, I would want it to be better. Right. But things like this. You have to be patient. Yeah. You got to be patient. People have to know who you are. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just jump out there and think that you're going to get a whole lot of attention or you're going to receive, you know, you're going to get, you know, good turnouts. It's not going to, it's not going to start like that. Mm-hmm. So we're being patient. All right. How did you come up with this idea? Like, this is, this is a stretch <laughs> from cosmetology. Like, yeah. this is, like, going from one extreme to the other. What made you branch off and say... Come on, children. (laughs) (laughs) Not having that luxury and wanting it because I know if I was exposed to better things, then I would probably be rich by now, you know? And what if we can encourage the kids in the community, you know, you could be a president or you can be CEO of a company or you can you can drive a band if you want to and pay for it cash, legal money, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't get a lot of times in our community, we come up with an idea, right? And somebody will tell you how it can fail. They'll tell you how it won't work, but we fail to talk about it can also uh, work. It like, it can mm-hmm. also work. So that's that's our goal. We want you to know, like, whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it. We can do whatever we want to do, mm-hmm. but you have to work hard at it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Speaking of hard work, man, so you're having a field day to inspire the youth, right? Mm-hmm. That's on February 24th at noon, McDonough Playground in, in Algiers, 1500 Test Street. I know where that's at. I did a photo shoot in that area before. Okay, so that ain't, that ain't too deep on the West Bank. No, it's right there. I go to the West Bank when I have to. I, I, I gave up going to the West Bank for Lent, so I won't be there for another few a few weeks. Uh, okay. I gave it up for Lent. All right. <laughs> That's what's up. So wait, uh, I want to you can take out. pictures on the West Bank, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Ashley Lorraine, she had a studio on the West Bank with Jafar Pierre. They take oh, both of them. Shout out to Jafar. He and you been in his studio on the no, West I Bank? No, I haven't, but I'm supposed to eventually. That's a amazing. good reason to go to the West Bank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and for the field day, right? Let's go That's the, the best field reason day. to go to the West Bank for the field day. Oh, oh don't for, the, for, for the, the kids. Field day. The field day for the, the kids. Mm-hmm. February twenty fourth. What day does that fall on? Saturday. Saturday at noon. Mm-hmm. Yep. So nice. it's Saturday coming. I want to shout out your whole team. I see we got Mr. Lester. Yeah. Ms. Wanda. Mm-hmm. Miss Brittany, Miss Natalie, and Mr. Trent. Shout out, you got a whole team. Yeah. Y'all got uniforms and everything. You ain't just started. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't just started. No, no this ain't just started. You, you, it looks very much put together. Going. I heard I that. Where, so where are you going? Where do you see yourself? <laughs> where do you want to go? Where, where right. do you see yourself and this where organization I'm going? going? More black doctors, mm. more black mechanics, more black. Radio uh, show host. We got enough of those. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> oh, I saw, no, you can just stop there. More black. More black. Yeah. black. Yeah. You feel me? Did you see Black Panther? No, I didn't see it yet. You, you got, got, you, you got boys. Got I'm girls. talking about sold out though. These, yeah, true. Oh, yeah. You got boys or girls? Okay. I have, uh, well, my boy is one and my girl is seven. Okay, well, girl, well, take, take, take two your, take, both. Take, well, take, 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 take your daughter. Okay, take your daughter. Take your daughter. Listen. Because it, it's black, black, they black, and I'm black, and I'm black, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the people where they can follow you on social media, where they can check out Crowns Corp, and you as an individual. Okay, so you can, oh, I'm sorry, mm, okay. crownscorp.org, um, Facebook, Crowns Corporation, JB, Instagram, Crowns Corp. JB and LinkedIn. If y'all don't have, um, for real, if y'all, if y'all don't have LinkedIn, y'all need to get LinkedIn. It's yeah. a good app, actually. You, you've been, you've had some success on LinkedIn? 
Businessman. Okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah. That's, the, that's the business. I need resources. I need resources on there. Okay. Like, I, need to, I need to grow up. You're right. I've been I've been at Facebook U. I'm a super senior at Facebook U, mm. and I ain't never graduated and moved on and got me a job at LinkedIn. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. You all like you more art on the artist side of it. You know what I'm saying? LinkedIn. Yeah. It, it gets it's like it's super business. business. Yeah. yeah, but you can make some really good. It sucks that, it. but <laughs> I'm not associated with super business. No. Like, yes. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> <laughs> People that be using whole words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where can they follow you? People that be using whole words. Um, y'all can follow me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is Pretty Jade. Uh, or <laughs> or the business page is Crowns Corporation JB. Instagram, um, Crowns Corp JB. Nice. All right. Well, Pretty Jade, Miss Jade Booker. Um, check, we'll check you out at on noon, February 24th. That's next Saturday. That's yeah. a week from the day at noon yeah. on the West Bank. Um, I'm going to send people there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell, yeah. tell people where it's happening now. Um, but, um, the phone we, number text, um, the phone number to text is 504 504- Four four six zero one nine zero. There you go. There you go. And next listen, summer. you're welcome to come back anytime you have. You want to talk about the next event y'all got going mm-hmm. on? I see Crowns Corp growing. I mean, the way that you to yeah. say y'all are a new organization, the website is better than mine. <laughs> and I, my, I thought I put time in my. Because she's on LinkedIn, DC. She's on LinkedIn. Yeah, I, I'm about to get on LinkedIn and <laughs> step my game up because my Facebook connections ain't, ain't getting me there. But <laughs> thank you for coming, Jay. <laughs> I suggest you stick around because uh, up next we have John LeCarbier the third, aka Mr. Lava Lamp One Z. Yeah, man. yeah, I guess it's your whole name. I had to, and he'll be up next, um, and he will do a live performance right here in Studio Twelve Thirty. Stick around because he's dope, um, right. and you guys listening, y'all better stick around because you're finna go on a break. Mm-hmm. You heard me, uh, Mastermind. What you got? Okay, we got some new Ellie Love. That's what's up, man. Look, stay tuned to the Miss Believe Radio Show. And when it squirts in your face, don't get nothing on no, you. Sir. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Why? I had, uh, uh, I, I, I had nothing. Get the whole thing as it goes. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell the people one more time. Oh, Follow Jay right now, man. Oh, Crowns Corporation JB on Facebook. I like it. So He's Trent, Trent is, 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 is your guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, y- and y'all also business partners. Like, yeah, at least support it. It works, <laughs> right? You think because we came from Wakanda? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point to be liberated. I, I, I ain't said free. nothing yet that I, that that would get me banned on the, I, a little N word slipped out in the very beginning. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, that was so, I time. think because it's after seven o'clock, they might let me go. <laughs> <laughs> they might let me go. Guess huh? what? Guess what? Nigga, 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 nigga. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta say nigga. I ain't even had a drink. Oh shit! Is it hot in here? Oh yeah, that's what I'm. Elliot Love, what right? Up? Yeah, that's Elliot Love. It's called uh, Matrix. Matrix. I oh, hope y'all like it. Hope you guys yeah. are feeling good tonight. We are live on the radio. And uh, y'all better be live with us every weekend because we ain't playing with y'all. Mm-hmm. Mastermind. Yes. What is going on in the life of DJ Mastermind? Well, I am working on some new music. New Japan. music? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, an instrumental guitar, a little thingy going on. You know, if you like to rock and roll. Come so, on. uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. And I also got a cool t-shirt line coming out. Uh, waiting for them to get printed, so hopefully that's a success. And, uh, and of course, yeah, at the misbelief, so, yeah. Okay. All right. Little hidden talents, that we, every time it's something new. Always so busy. Yeah. So, he is a, a, a gymnast, correct? Karate instructor, a martial artist. Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Really? Yeah. Uh, I used to, um, well, I was a cheerleader. Really? Um, a competitive cheerleader. For, uh, uh, which uh, gym? Well, I did. It's in Alabama. But oh, okay. It's related. Have you ever heard of Ace? Like Ace? Y'all are the red. Yeah, the yeah. red. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. it's kind of sort of associated with that. But I cheered for them. Um, and I actually won worlds with them. Oh, and nice, then nice, I did. I cheered in high school. Because mm -hmm. I went to high school in Alabama. Okay. And we, was, we were on a team that won nationals five times in a row. Nice. And nice, so, nice. Like, so then after that, I started like coaching. Of course. Uh, cheering of course. Those so you were rock and roll then. then. I mean, I ain't mad at you. Hey, I'm I retired mad. now. I've yeah, had, I have some shoulder surgeries and I'll. Yeah, yeah my shoulder ain't I just right go back either. and look like at my past videos of me tumbling. So I'm like, damn. I seen like past past videos of me tumbling. It's like, what possessed me to even like do yeah, all like, this stuff? Yeah, like, why do I think like, this was okay? <laughs> yeah, like, I can still feel my thumb and my wrist too. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ. But, you know, that's like a good, good sport though. It's like a lot of discipline. Yeah. So when she was a, uh, it's probably a bass, huh? Yeah, yeah. definitely a bass. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But yeah. That's what's up, though, man. I love cheer and chill. Like, I've always done that. Right. Always going back on the radio. I'm not sure, but I know what this is. Yeah. You want to go on the radio? Everyone, this is Raheem Glassby. Yeah. Shout out to you, Raheem Glassby. If you are online right now, we're playing your music. Be welcome. Featuring KJ. This is... Yes. Hey. Hey. So we just listen to some music. This is new music by the great Glassby. But the voice right now is KJ. It's long. I'll tell him. Six minutes. The song is about six minutes long. Well, we're going to let this thing roll. Are we going to let it roll? Yeah. Yeah. Let it roll. Don't listen to them. Not six minutes. Why would, why would you come in on this conversation? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the one you told y'all. Man, let them up do one hook. No, two hooks. Two hooks. <laughs> What do I feel? Singing. Right, Why do I feel like I'm floating? This is the second song, man. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Raheem. Raheem, you're watching. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. You on the radio? Come on, Heen. No more karaoke. Mary Jane. Damn, I can't wait for a video for this one. Can I play the video? Uh oh, Jay Spill's feeling it. Mary Jane. Hey, he says my song. Let's do that. Mary Jane. Tell them turn it on in your house, turn it up as loud as you can. Yeah, man, put it on the radio. But by the way, Raheem, this song six minutes long, man. <laughs> yeah, you the radio. If you're trying version. to get on, on the radio, you need to cut that up. But I do like the, the bridge. I love the, I bridge. Like the bridge. I know, that's my favorite part. Oh, Sorry. Song. Cut this. Cut this, man. No. Can we play the second part? On the second part of the bridge? Right, What's up, bro? standing in here, man. Right, we we need to go share this. Come on. Here? Raheem, you gotta edit this song out for the radio, man. It's so long, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hit the button. Did, did, okay, well, and we're back. That was rude. Sorry. We're back. Yeah, we're back on the radio show with no. <laughs> you just cut it. Why? You, you know who's running this show? Come on, now. I, 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 all right, man. Oh, God. All right, well, give me, give me, give me a second. Oh, God. Everybody, everybody take a breath. <laughs> all right. And we're back. Hey. We're back, you guys. Welcome okay. back to the Misbelief Radio Show. Day two. Live on JBOK AM 1230. I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio. All right. It's <laughs> not <laughs> crickets. Moon crickets. Moon crickets. Moon crickets. <laughs> oh, God. No. Don't be using my. You know what? Ba -ba. Who's that to the right side? Hi, everybody. It's me, the one and only Lady Oshun of Wakanda. <laughs> Please. Uh, who's this to the left side? It's that actor guy, Mchala Bats Bradford. <laughs> yeah. You hear me? And who's that to his left? Chase still keeping it real black. Real black, black, you heard me? And then who's that in the booth? The mastermind, the conqueror of the colony. Yes! Alright, alright, mastermind. What was that last song? Man, that last song was uh, by Raheem Glassby. Mr. Raheem Glassby. I love that song, man. It's amazing. 
Yeah. Really awful things. Yep. They think about amazing things. Me. Why was, they got to be mutually exclusive? True that. True that. Right. You, you could be awful and amazing at the same time. Look at me. Um, <laughs> and before that, what was that song you played? That was Elliot Love. I write them some new music from Elliot Love. I was digging that one. That was pretty cool. Um, by the way, the Misbelief Radio Show, once again, we only play music by local, mostly independent artists. So submit it to us. I would love to play your music on the radio, just like I just did. By the way, man, I heard this guy coming up next also just released an album full of music. It's on title, like a like a, a, a not independent artist. Um, make some noise for John LeCarbier. Yo. <laughs> there, we there we go. Lay it on the we be leaving class. What up, John? What's going on? How you feel, brother man? Feel good. Feeling free and connected. All right, free mm -hmm. and connected. Um, we always ask all our guests. First question: You know what a misbelief is? Yes, I do. What, what you got? You got a misbelief story for us? Yeah, I actually had a misbelief tree in my backyard. We call that privilege. privilege. We call that privilege. <laughs> mm -hmm. Grew up privileged. Okay, tell uh, me more. Uh, well, um. By being in the backyard, uh, there used to be a spot where I used to hide from people. Um, <laughs> like we had like a big tool shed in the backyard, and then right behind the tool shed was the tree. And I would go back there, and that's where I go to uh, either dig in the dirt and like get like Judy bugs and worms and stuff. My dog say Judy bugs. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, uh, That'd be what I do when I was a little kid. And uh, we actually took an inner tube. Me and my friends we took an inner tube and put the inner tube on the tree. And we'd climb on top of the shed and sit in the inner tube and it'd be like a little bungee jump for us. We used to do that too. Nice. All that on the mystery. You had a you had a bunch of privilege. You had a, a, a tree you could swing <laughs> from and stuff. Well, he from New Orleans for real, little dog. That's right. some type of stuff we do. You said Junie Bugs. He did say Junie Bugs. I ain't heard Junie Bugs. I'm saying I'm talking about the inner tube part. You ever just get creative with your partners? I mean, I mean back in the day we used to actually go outside. You remember that? Right. No, uh, I have no friends. Mastermind grew up real creative doing backflips on mattresses and whatnot. <laughs> So John L, you got uh, quite a few things going on, man. First of all, people don't know John L already. He's a very talented spoken word artist, and slash, photographer, slash, um, slash dean of students. Slash. He, be running these, he be running these kids. You heard <laughs> um, <laughs> Slash creator, creative renaissance man. Um, I like that, and I, I hope I can. I'm saying this right, but like your the, your brand um, is very uh, sex positive. Yes. Um, I like that, man. Like you, uh, you, you encourage people to express themselves sexually, judgment-free. Um, I heard you were doing a, a book of photography of nude. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me about it. Uh, this is a project called New Erotica. Um, New Erotica. Yeah, it's a uh, spin on New Orleans and Erotica, um, and basically it's uh, my love of New Orleans um, and my love of women, and. Um, oh. And when I when I when I say love of women, uh, most people think sex. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the man I am today is because of the women that's in my life, and, um, and the women yeah. that's continued to come into my life. Like I had no real positive male role models ever in my life. Um, mm. Speak, Jachala. So, so I wanted to highlight that, and um, like all of the women I use weren't particularly real models. Um, they were just people who had body issues, and they wanted to do the shoot. To make them feel better about their bodies, and um, so we did it outside. Mm. Uh, like you can see, I'm in Cafe Du Monde on the street car. I have like women posing all over New Orleans. So, so I'm like major landmarks in New Orleans, and then a beautiful woman. Wait, wow. you, people were posing naked at Cafe Du Monde on the street car? Yeah, I didn't see all that. What is? Yeah, it's on my website. It's on my website. I'm, I got the website over right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on, it's on a different. It's on a Tumblr. It's on a Tumblr. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. so okay. I also thought that um, I thought yeah, that your your book wasn't also. I mean, wasn't uh, just women. I, I I knew some guys. It, yeah, I wanted some guys to do it, but no, the guys don't. Really, I I've sent like three dudes who I know three dudes who I know like to be naked. I I <laughs> told them what you was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I know three cats I'm going to take who don't mind being naked. I was like, you know what? John L. is doing this book. I think you'd be perfect for it. Yeah, no man never hit me up. Really? Wow. Should I name drop? Mm. <laughs> Hashtag name go drop? be naked for John. Raheem Glaspie. He liked to be oh. naked. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Me and Raheem supposed to be doing something. Okay. Oh, is he going to be naked in it? Uh, something like that. 
This is a video, though. It's going to be a video. So. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I was, ex- I was, it, it, I was expecting tasteful nudity, but with a video, Raheem. If it's Raheem, it's we, porn. We, 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 <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have experience. Without anyone else there, just this him, is, it's we, porn. We, we have experience with Raheem on video. He don't know how not to make it porn. He don't, <laughs> like, he don't know how to just keep it, so good luck, man. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, outside of the book, man, you got some music recently released, right? Yes, uh, I've released a few I'm things. just, I'm just saying this, man, you never told me this. You know, but, uh, we play music by local independent artists, you ain't never send me nothing. Uh, uh, I'm scared you might not be radio friendly, though. I know you No, can. I have some radio friendly Okay. Stuff. This, uh, this album, actually, an uh, album I've been recording maybe back in 2010. is a very personal album. Like, I used to deal with depression a lot. And, uh, mm-hmm. I always compared that, uh, depression to being a black cloud, especially at the end. One of my favorite artists I have a song called Black Cloud. And so I named my album that. And it's, uh, it's just like a journey of my personal issues. Like, it's not all, you know, most people now know me for sex. But before I started talking about sex and all of this other stuff, I used to talk about depression. I used to talk about love. I used to talk about all these other things. And um, so this album is all of that. And, uh, I'd be interested in listening to that, man, because um, I know what it's like to uh, have certain things associated with you all the time, and, but but to know that, like, you have... More. Way more, mm-hmm. right? People think I'm old jokes all the time and whatnot, and root, 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 root. Right. And that's only 98% of the time, you know what I mean? The 2% mm-hmm. of the time, I'd be curled up in, in the ball and feet Carl position. Carl Thomas. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl Thomas. I wish I never met her. <laughs> um, so I'd be interested... In that, I don't see that, that album on, on the, the website. We're going to hear that one. I, I got to update it. Uh, but um, the, what's, what's the, the album is called Black Cloud, and it's on Titles, Spotify, iTunes, I Apple Music. On the title. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Google it. Nice. Google. Yeah. So good. We're going to put that on the Google. And what's your most recent album? That uh, Black Cloud. Black Cloud is the most recent album. Wow, man. I'd love to. Look, you can Google it right now. So, outside of that, man, um, you a viral cat caller recently. <laughs> uh, viral. If y'all have seen this video, I've shared it um, on my, my Facebook, but everybody shared it on their Facebook. It's been viewed. 300,000 times on your page, right. uh, and then now 50,000 times on media takeout. <laughs> Respect <laughs> women more. Some do wear their clothes for themselves to enjoy, John. Everybody don't want to be hollered at, John. I was not happy with you at first. <laughs> I was not happy with it, John. It's so, thirsty, creepy so, Negroes so, like uh, this is why women nowadays think every man be on some BS. Are you reading? Really? These are real comments. These are real comments. <laughs> What else, what else you got? Because you, you got some backlash. So, oh, who are we talking about? Uh, he, I think, what this happened on Mardi Gras, right? No, this actually happened uh, in Demian Saturday. And Saturday. I didn't, oh. And I didn't even post the video until uh, Valentine's Day. It's all about that timing. Oh, oh man. Good timing. <laughs> that even it, was, it was good was timing. That it was perfect timing. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was great time for everybody. Everybody's like doing all they love on Facebook and they're like this. That's the crazy part. The only thing that was intentional about this video was me making fun of people in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I already yeah. That was the only thing that was intentional. Everything else, it just kind of happened how it happened. And that's what I got from it more than anything else. That's why I shared it because for one, dudes from New Orleans will try to holler at you and rip you at the same time. Yeah. Well, and, they most definitely and, will. <laughs> they most definitely will. I'm going to say that Lava Lamp onesie was mild. That was polite. That was It was compliment. funny and it was mild because it, it, it could, it, that she wasn't me. A whole lot of when I heard yes. people was, people had backlash, I was like, why? What, and he kind of chuckled while he was doing it. That's what tripped me out. Like, you could kind of hear in the tone that it doesn't... <laughs> That's what made it worse for me. I was like, why is he laughing? Like I said, so you Why watched it with no laughing? context. Right. I didn't know. And I was like, I know she this is like, not this good. Is but not mind funny. you, I just saw John at church. We call it church. At church. Uh, Yo, no, you can say blazing worship. At blazing. We, 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 we saw him at church, church the other day. And I was like, all right, John. And he was chilling. And next thing I know, lava lamp onesie. And I said, oh, my God, I see him at church. But there, like, there, was a, there was a caption, right? <laughs> Was it there? Caption on it? said, yeah. "Dudes from New Orleans." That's how dudes like, in New Orleans <laughs> <laughs> That was the original caption, and then after all of the backlash, I added some extra to it because uh, by by the getting all of that attention, uh, I didn't want no money from it, but I added the uh, donate to the charity thing to mm-hmm. it, so I had that where people could. You know, everybody was so concerned about women and getting women away from predators. I found you know one of the shelters I knew about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I had it. 
to where people can donate to uh, the women and children shelter here in New Orleans. But Perfect. Nobody, I mean, we raised twenty five dollars off of it. So call out some of these, some of these. Oh, oh so you care more us. about coming at this man neck uh, so than donating to a charity that can actually help some women out? You want to say some names? Drop names. All right, Joseph Latka. Joseph Latka. Lava lamp ones a great pickup line, bruh. You effing creeper. Let me. Emmanuel Walk. It's thirsty, creepy inners like this. Oh, Inner, not the, the N -word. oh wow! I like we, you should go to each. One. I would. I got time tomorrow. I might go to each one and send them the link. Each one of these people who who responded like this, like if you care that much. This is why I hate walking around men who be thirsty like that. You gotta follow this girl for some attention. I get she it. Clearly don't want to yeah, yeah, give yeah. it. But that's the point. He made the I video. Yeah, that was the, that was the whole point of the video. Uh, like if I felt like people took that video and thought it was real, so mm -hmm. they, that's why they acted like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, I think if everybody, and I tried to make everybody understand that it was a joke, it was satire, mm -hmm. and uh, and that I feel the same way that they feel. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people that's trying to glorify catcalling or anything like right. that. I actually feel the same way they feel, so I understand their, their anger. Towards uh, that character you basically Yeah, I understand played. everything, so I wasn't even mad at them. I just wanted everybody to understand that, like, okay, everybody get your emotions together and, like, mm -hmm. really think clearly and pay attention to all of the context right. and see how we can take this and... Actually, do something with that. Do something. And if you want to know how much satire it is, we got Miss Lava Lamp Onesie and, and Miss Black Jacket right here in the building. Um, how did y'all keep a straight face throughout that? Because I mean, well, I'm sorry I said that because it's probably not something that you laugh at usually. You laugh because this is this is your guy friend. You knew who that was. Usually, it ain't such a funny situation, right? I'm no. sure it's not. But at the time, this was this. It looked pretty damn funny. I mean, Lava Lamp Onesie. So pretty much, we were on our way to Endemion. He was getting on our nerves. As I said, so we were kind of ignoring him, and he started joking with us, and mm -hmm. I decided, which I guess was brilliant acting, to play along. You better be a grab guy my friend <laughs> and, uh, and keep it moving, and completely just keep ignoring him. But we were laughing. We the were dying laughing. Did y'all know he was recording when it, when it happened? Or? Right after he finished, we turned around and were like, and, "Yeah, we turned oh, we were around this and too." We, yeah, mm, that but, was funny. And then I and this is why I like John L. So he's a classy gentleman. He's he's very pro woman, like he said earlier. Um, and I, I felt like he purposely kept it clean. At, at the end of the video, he said "f y'all" then, yeah. which that would let you know that wasn't a real dude from New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite the most tame experience I've had yeah. with someone. Yeah. Yeah. Me it felt street. like it. Yeah. I've, I've witnessed worse. When I saw Rihanna outside the House of Blues, I was like, "So green dress, so big foreheads, you know, all kind of stuff." Yeah. 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 Ye
Spit some lines or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> whatever you want to do, whatever your talent is, uh, it's open space for any type of artist. And then you have a pretty big show coming up um, at Kevin Isambul. Yes, um, the Seduction of Your Mental presents uh, Sex Live, which is my sex positive uh, all erotic show. Um, erotic spoken word, but less dancing, body painting, uh, comedy. Uh, this man right here will be on that stage, but uh, I yeah, think but he's I'm, doing I'm doing poetry. He's doing poetry yeah, that night, mm-hmm. so you know he's wearing a different hat. Um, I'm giving you what I got. But uh, the main thing of, like, anything I do that makes me money or draws attention to me, I try to give back in any type of way. So we test for free at this event. I, so I love that. you can come there and get tested for HIV, STD, other STDs. We give away, like, uh, condoms and all of those things to prevent, you know, certain things. Uh, so we give them back as well as entertainment. I love that you do that, man, because it's, it's, entertainment is necessary. Uh, but when you, like, you have already uh, amassed the following people who, kind of expect sexual stuff from you mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. as of now as of now right but like um with the attention you're not just wasting it you're like you're educating you're, you're testing um yeah. and then even with this i wish people would have donated to you think i'm gonna go and find all these people who was hating on, on your video i mean I, look at this one guy them. this one guy he thinks you're amazing Yo, New Orleans inners have a funny ass accent and language yeah they're the only inners that are from down south doing your own thing that's what you need in your life besides houston florida and georgia so some he, he's supporting. <laughs> his you encourage somebody. Yeah. I don't know why. What? I, I guess that's oh, not God. I don't know. Is it All right. I don't know. So you doing that cat calling dog? Keep it up. Uh-huh. Keep her head up. No. Cat, <laughs> call that there. Guess what I found on Spotify? See, you told us that you had this album that recently dropped on January 12th, but what you did not tell us with our brother Raheem Glassby is on one of these tracks. Why you don't say stuff like that? Okay, well, is, is that song radio friendly? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why. Yeah, that's why. All of them say explicit. All of them say explicit. Uh, all of them say, uh, all of them say, but one of them is actually not explicit. Okay. Them. That's the love poem that's on there. That's not explicit. That and that's the thing too. I knew you first for poetry. Like people keep on like the sex thing came about, but yeah. you were doing all kinds of poetry and love and such. So it's it's, it's funny yeah. that like you're the sex guy. But yeah. wait, hold up. You did have something on Snapchat once. What you took over? I'm oh, Peekers. Peekers. Um, that was popular. Uh, Peekers was popular on Twitter, and uh, I kind of became an intern for them. Yeah. And I was writing for them. And, Explain uh, what Peekers is to people that yeah, don't know. You well, such an enigma, <laughs> and I'm just sitting here going. Uh, Peekers, uh, is, uh, it was like this pop- popular sex Twitter, tweet, tweet, Twitter account. And, uh, they really? talked about sex, they posted, like, Peeker? Peekers, a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of memes and Insta, Google it. bunch of gifts and all of these other things. I don't know if, I don't know what's going on with them right now, because I haven't been on Twitter that much until I posted so that what, <laughs> So what was your, what was your role with, with Peekers? Were you taking the, 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 the video, or you just uploading uh, content? I was... Uploading content. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just was on Snapchat one day and like I, I clicked on it. I just was like, wait, I know him. What, what y'all doing on this thing? He was like, man, just come ask me questions. I give you some advice. <laughs> Straight up. And I was like, all right. He ain't showing no peekers. That's what it is, John. Tell people where they can follow you on social media, man. Um, uh, everything John LeCarbier. Um, Spell that. Spell that. <laughs> I wasn't even saying it right the first time. The first couple times I was saying your name, uh, I had to sound it out. John is, you know, spelled with an H. So, and then my last name. <laughs> yeah, cool. Let people, people know. Let them know. You know. And then uh, my last name is uh, L A C A R B I E R E. So the Carbier. Yeah. Okay, that's what it. You know, man. And I get people who you know say you to thank you the sex guy now. People that's because I have these books. Called the seduction of your mental. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Available and, uh, where? Available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, uh-huh. uh, wherever you can get books at. Um, and um, yeah, I just dropped that book um, Monday. So really, the last one. So Why didn't you bring one here? We could have. How many books yeah. have you written at this point? At this point, ten total, but only ten. but only three of them are sex books. Where my book is? That's okay. So, right. no, so, this, so this, this, this is what I was thinking. So you know. Uh, you weren't always a sex guy. You won't always be the sex guy. I'm sure people go through different phases, where, and they label you where you are in that phase. Like that's what you're always gonna be. Like for instance, I was at one time the analingus guy because I had this analingus joke. He would be like, "Hey, look, analingus guy, analingus guy," and they would call me at every time I went places, right? And I was just like, "This is not who I always was, and it's not who I'm always gonna be." 
So I refuse to let people label me the analingus guy. Like you shouldn't let people label you the uh, sex I mean, guy. It's cool though, cause uh, it, 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 like, is cool. You're right. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, a lot of my transitioning into becoming like out of depression and all of that mm-hmm. was because of accepting my sexuality and Same. liberating mm-hmm. myself sexually. So. Mm-hmm. See, that's so, why I be so the analingus guy. Sexual is freedom. Out of honestly, difference. sexual freedom is uh, I believe in that, and that's one of the reasons why I'm the way I am today. And, one of the reasons why I can respect women more because I'm so liberated. sexually liberated with myself, so I know how to respect mm-hmm. those who I want to have sex with. That's what it is. Any any uh, thoughts on Anna Lingus before we get out of here? Really? That's cool. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, <laughs> Thank that, you. That's a t-shirt. Anna Lingus. Lingus. All right. It's so cool. You guys, <laughs> it's we're cool. gonna take a break. My man Mastermind's gonna play some songs, but if you listen to the Facebook Live, stay tuned because my man John LeCarbier is gonna do a live performance right out there in studio at 1230. Um, and, oh man, look at the kids just showed up. Good, you're gonna freak them out, ain't you? Uh, <laughs> good, Don't it's gonna be real fun, y'all. Share this live, the video. We're gonna have fun right here in studio at 1230. In the meantime, Mastermind, what you got queued up? I got a side of Joe. Mm. Uh, nothing but you. Okay, this is. All right, mm-hmm. y'all. Well, this is the Believe Radio Show, and um, put that bib, strap it around your neck, so that you don't get none on you. <laughs> you have a fun episode, man. Have a good day. Damn, Chris LeBron. Y'all better share this video. John L. is super talented. Great words, great voice, great energy. What is that? What is that? I actually would have thought about if you would have something with music and people would have danced to it. Y'all, I don't know what we're about to do. Hey, y'all, what are you doing? Hey, y'all, what are you doing? What's up, dude? I'm almost going to go. What's going on, man? Oh, hey, Bone. I haven't seen you in a while. I know, I know. You were sick the last time I came. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah
I would do anything to make you feel happy. Ignore the demons that attack me when I'm scratching my head. Wonder why I miss you so much. Because sometimes life don't allow us to see each other as much as I would like to. Ooh, I like you. Queen, I like the way you make me feel. All right. Yeah. Yeah. John LeCarbier, share this video so people can watch later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's an epic love poem that's actually on my album, Black Cloud. It has music behind it, uh, produced that's by Dove Beats. Uh, so, yeah, title, Amazon, whatever you want, is on it. Just One more time it. for John LeCarbier, man. That dude is doing it. Books, albums, teaching, nothing but blessings, testing, performing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Why you want to talk about analingus on the radio? Why? What, oh. You worried that people is watching? <laughs> How you feel about analingus, bro? Yeah, you. Yeah, I man. Okay. Expound. Expound upon it. I mean, this is a great thing, you know. I never get people to really expound upon analingus. There's nothing really to expound besides. No, it's great, no. It's great to see the woman's reaction. You know what I'm saying? So I do it. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Shun, could you grab this one for a second? Mm -hmm. grab a chair. Okay. Uh, Are these people here viewing? How much more time we got? <laughs> we have viewers. Talk to the people. Look, our favorite, our favorite kids are here. The only ones we like. I know. Ellington. That's Ellington. Elliot. Elliot. And that's Elliot. Yeah, that's Elliot. You tell them like the mic ain't on. He don't, he don't feel like it. He doesn't feel like it. This is awesomely cool. Everything looks so close. Up. Are you using the uh, selfie mode? I'm using whatever mode this is. Hello. I like having a lot of people here in the station just for the, the good energy okay. and the feel good time. Raquel, you talk to the Facebook Live? Too. Mm -hmm. Hi, how's everyone doing? I'm grateful and thankful to be here. This is such a blessing, and hopefully I can go forward with this comedy thing. I hope y'all find me funny. A lot of people have told me I am, and thanks to everybody I've met, I'm loving the support. I truly am, and this feels like home to me. So thank you so much for being here at WBOK. Hmm? You can follow me for the most part right now. I'm on uh, Raquel Bickham Facebook. Um, don't really do the Snapchat. I do have Instagram. It's also linked to my Facebook. So I just have to do a couple of more handles on social media because I would love for y'all to follow me and keep me up and posted with my career, my new, you know, my new thing going with the comedy. So all already know. I love to tell the funny as well as the truth. So holla at me and stay tuned to WBOK. Awesome. 12.30 a.m. Is your comedy? I'm, home. I'm here. Is your comedy on? Uh, is, do, do you do social honest, media? No, it's not. To be honest with you, for the most part, I this is something new. Okay. I'm a licensed hairdresser by trade, and through meeting Blair uh, Haley as well as his husband DC Paul and a few other friends, they encouraged me to do this to you know to try it out. So I'm seeing it where I'm seeing where it's going to take me. For awesome. the most part, you know. But my thing truly is hair. I love to be around people, like to meet new people, talk about social topics, everything that's going on, and just keep it lively and keep it funny, you know. Try to keep it as light as possible. Not be too political. She being real clean right now. Yeah, I have no other choice. I have no other choice but to keep it clean. No, 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 you want to keep it clean on the radio, but the social media the not Social media Oh, I don't know. Say what the fuck you want to on this one. I didn't know that, people, but at the same time, I'm not going to let him take my car Come on. off right now. Come on. I'm not going to let him do that. Come on. I'm not going to let him do that to me. On Monday, Grot wouldn't let him clean the bottom. Now she got a change. It was. It was. Yes, you know, yeah, see? She, yeah. You know, I gotta be sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Thanks to my husband. Bought me these little shoes. You know, I have to be put together <laughs> because I don't know who may see me. Somebody Come might on. want me to do something for him, you know? So 
I don't need everybody to associate me with how they already know me versus the new 2018 me. Okay. That's where I'm going with it. Come on. Yeah, new shit. Since he say go live, I'm on some new shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my business up off the ground. Y'all already know I love to do hair. Where is your business located? I'm everywhere you are. Wherever your hair go, I'm there. As long as you have cash, <laughs> quick pay, PayPal. Do you have any specialties that you do? I do hair. You do hair, also. I do hair. I Come don't on. do Jericho. If anybody that knows me, I don't, <laughs> do, I don't do perms. Okay. I love natural hair. You know, for the most part, I love people. I just like to be around people that like to be around me. This, like I said, is really something new for me. And I'm trying to go forward with it. Come you know on. what I'm saying? That's all I can do. I'm a true entrepreneur. All those that know me know I do not like to punch a clock. I procrastinate with my time, but when my time comes up, I need my money. Yes. So it is what it is, and I'm trying to make the best of this new year. So hopefully y'all follow me, y'all stay tuned, and I'll be wherever you are with a good fun and the story to tell. Thank you. Yes, you are welcome. You are welcome. Blessings to you. Thank you so much, Facebook, <laughs> and tune in. Y'all know I stay live all the time. And give us your social medias one more time. Raquel Bickham. And I will definitely have to get a Snapchat and a new Twitter handle. But y'all know me, DC Paul, as well as Blair Haley. They have named me Rock the Truth. So that will be my handle, Rock the Truth, the comedian slash hairstylist. And y'all be blessed. Thank you. Do you have any upcoming shows coming up? Well, I'm still trying to put some material together. Okay. And DC has been mentoring me as well as talking to me since, uh, since we've met. Okay. So I will be trying to put something together for the next up and coming open mic. It's open mic tonight, right across the street. Oh, yeah. Saloon, right across the street. Oh, for real. Uh, so well, I tell y'all what, Facebook. Let me go ahead and try to win me a little cash. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be right across the street if he's telling me open mic right across the it's street. True. Why not? It's a new comedy open mic just started on Saturday night. Saturday um, night. And comedians listen at the Seahorse Saloon oh, on Gentilly. Right across from the racetrack, it's the bar. It's the only bar right across from the racetrack. Hey, and y'all know I love the racetrack. <laughs> so, <laughs> she was sitting down to the science, having money at the racetrack. Yes, down to the science, baby. Thanks to my husband. He lets me know, look, baby, you don't have to spend a lot to make a lot. And that's what it is, so. Come on, Brian. I'm trying to get it with these jokes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We only 10 seconds. Raquel is a bowl of energy. And we're back. We're back, y'all. Welcome back to the Misbelief Radio Show, live on WBOK AM 1230, or on any one of the many platforms you catch us out here. What's up, Mama? I know you're listening way in Dallas, either on the website or on the app. I sure appreciate you. Um, I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio. Who is this to my right side? It's me. Oh, shit. I was about to say something else. It's me. Oh, shoot. The non-millennial Arsenio. Ooh, <laughs> I'm, I can be... Ooh, no, ooh, I ain't gonna ooh. be her. I'm gonna let the do- the controversy sit down. The, sit the, the, the millennial Monique. But, oh! <laughs> I can't. Hit the button. Yeah, who's this? To my left side. Martin. Martin. Martin Bradford. I love it. I love it. Who's that to your left side? I have a microphone issue, sorry. Yeah. It's Jake. Jake. Yeah. It's, so, it's, 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 it's Jay still keeping it real, y'all. Jay still keeping it real. Who's that in the booth? What's happening with your mastermind? Uh, what was that last song you just played, man? The last song. What's, the last song I played was Alexander the Great, and that one is called Just Wanna. Okay, I thought. Okay, cool. And before that, what it was again? And before that was AP Wise Guys, and that's called Magnificent. All right. All right. <laughs> nice. We're only playing these local artists. Names. What up, AP Wise guys? I hope that song was magnificent. I didn't get a chance to hear it because John L. was doing his thing in Studio 1230 with the, with the epic love poem. It was pretty beautiful. You should check out our Facebook Live video every week because it's some behind the scenes and exclusive footage that you only get if you watch it, not if you're listening. Now... This here segment is my favorite segment here on the Misbelief Radio Show. I love doing this segment every week. It's called, What's Going On Out Here? What's Going On Out Here? You heard me? 
is where we talk about local talking points, topics, news, events, places, foods, whatever's going on out here that you might need to know about. I got one for you. It's an exclusive. Are you ready? You want to know what's going on out here? Starting on Monday, the Misbelieve Radio Show is going to have a weekday show here on WBOK AM, 1230 AM, called the Misbelieve Weekday Lounge. <laughs> That's right, the Millennial Arts Center will be here from 7 to 8 p.m. taking calls at 504-260-9265. On my first episode this Monday, I'll be sitting in the studio with D1. Yo! Yeah, we're going oh we to we answer some questions. He's going to take some calls. We're going we're gonna to do the Facebook Live, and it's the only time I'm going to do Facebook Live because I ain't going to do it every day. I'm going to do it. On Monday from 7 to 8. Because that'll be a million videos, too. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't do it every day. I can't. Shout out to Algiers Diamond, though. She listens and she watches sometimes, but she does a Facebook Live video every morning mm. from her house. Uh, most mornings. Sometimes she admits she just couldn't get it together. But I get it. Um... I'm, it's going to be hard me going six nights a week on the radio, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get my life together, get on LinkedIn or something, mm-hmm. and then try to make that work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, check me out. Me and D1, 7 p.m. here on WBOK 1230 AM. And then every weekday, give me a call at 504-260-9265. We're going to talk about things. Millennials, that's what's going on out here. Oh, Shum, what you got? <laughs> what's going on Dramatic pause. He's so lame. Gosh. <laughs> I try to fight it, like I try to look intrigued, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's something in Blacker Than Black News. 300 Years in Black, they're going to be doing a panel shaping the narrative, the importance of the black voice in New Orleans. So it's going to be at the McKenna Museum Thursday, February 22nd from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's 2003 Quran Delat. And it's going to be really, really good. It's going to talk about the black experience. We're going to have panelists such as Beverly McKenna, James B. Borders, and many more. You can actually, The event is free and open to the public. You guys should come out, take a listen, and get this 300 years in black history of New Orleans experience. I have to see if Malik's going to be able to go to that. I hope he will, man. I know. I feel like he would really enjoy that. I know. That's something that I think that he'd really be, be interested in as well. Yeah, man. That's what's going on out here. Um, I got another one, man. So yesterday, last night, I got to open up for Legacy at the Jazz Market. Oh. And it was a transformative experience. I only said the N-word four times this mm. time, That's beautiful. Uh, in front of Legacy's audience. But it was pretty dope because uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph and Anthony Mackie mm. were both in the audience. Um, I saw Cheryl Lee Ralph doubled over with laughter at one of my jokes. So it went from being like the most nervous experience I'd ever had to possibly the most gratifying uh, common experience I've ever had. So uh, to check out what's happening at the New Orleans Jazz Market, I think every month they bring in a new, a different musician to feature with the orchestra, with the Nojo Orchestra. Mm-hmm. Um, and next month, Eric Benet is coming on March 5th. Oh. Yep. oh. Okay, Eric Benet, you still okay. kicking? Yeah, He's man. Dow right. back there like, yeah! <laughs> yeah, yeah man, what they did last night was they did um, Lettucey. She did the Nina Simone tribute. Um, but you got to hear a couple other vocalists like Miss Nayo Jones and one of the guys, I think he plays trombone for the No Joe, but also is a vocalist. Um, just talented, talented group. Yeah, even Cheryl Lee Rell grabbed the mic at the end of the show and she was singing with the band. So it was, it was just a great experience at the Jazz Market. Yeah, check it out next month with, with, with Eric Benet. Uh, in which are opening at the Millennial Arsenio. No. How did it make you feel? How did you feel? How did, like, was the energy electric? Yeah, it was. I was I was super nervous. I was wandering around trying to look at a familiar face because when I see familiar faces, Daryl, I thought you was going to be there. I honestly did because you'd be everywhere, my man. But um, <laughs> I look for familiar faces just to get comfortable. And I'm like, oh, I don't see nobody I recognize. Oh, I recognize her. That's Shirley Ralph. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my parents got Ethan Mojo. I'm like, man, let me get out of here. Not Moesha, mama. Yeah, yes, yeah, Moesha, the Ethan, and the mama. And, and the thing is, I looked her in the eye. I was like, you know what? I ain't going to direct any of my jokes at you because I've seen enough episodes of Moesha to know that she don't play with other people's children. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to let you make it with Shirley Ralph. So I was nervous after seeing her, and I'm looking to get away from her. And I walk away, and Anthony Mackie was like a few feet away from her. I'm like, Damn it. That's my neighbor. My neighbor. This is the second time I thought you said the N-word. Oh, first you man. said, first you called, um, what was going on? First you called John L. You said, 
You was an enigma. <laughs> and I said, what she say? And I just, real close. Real and then she close. said, oh, that's my neighbor. I was like, oh, okay, that's your neighbor, huh? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He left. Never mind. Don't be an enigma about but it. But I know where he lives. And that's my name, literally. He knows that's my neighbor. He lives like them up in my grandma's house. He lives. That's my neighbor. Hey, man, hey, hey, auntie. That's what's going on. That's <laughs> what you got, my man. What's going on out here? I mean, watch, watch your kids, man. You need to just watch your kids. Because I, I came across this story, and every, when I was reading it, I couldn't help but laugh. And I know I'm not supposed to laugh at this story. I know it's wrong to laugh. But just read. Okay, man. So. Um, a young girl at an LSU game got hit in the face by Bryce George's Grand Slam ball. What? <laughs> sorry. And I'm sorry, when you see the picture of the girl, you can't help but laugh. But anyway, a young girl was struck in the face Friday night by the Grand Slam ball. David Taylor, an LSU game management official, confirmed the incident and said the child was transported by ambulance to Baton Rouge Hospital. He didn't know the name of the, the, name of the, the child. Or the name of the hospital was told by medical personnel familiar with the incident that her condition wasn't serious. Um, okay, I want everybody to look at the picture. <laughs> Why did he put the little hat Oh, they put a name to a red arrow on the picture and see exactly where the ball hit the girl in the face at. Oh and she looked up in horror. She looked up in horror. Oh my mouth wide open. Like, oh no. So if, if you weren't sure about exactly where this ball hit this girl in the face, they showed you the red arrow was pointing directly to the point of impact. And whoever wrote this story got jokes, but they said the, the sportscaster tweeted they received a text from a fan sitting in the left field, stands there where the girl was hit, that uh, that she may have had some teeth knocked out. No, that's not funny. <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> another, another tweet showed the ball coming toward a young girl with a purple shirt. Just behind the front railing of the left field, he bleaches as at least three adults around her tried to reach for the ball, but he clocked in the face. Uh, Jordan spoke to reporters, you know, the guy who hit the ball. Imagine said, being one of those adults who missed that ball. <laughs> oh, and then that, 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 that girl so teeth out of her face. They got like a football <laughs> freeze frame play by oh, play. Oh, man, like why are we all even <laughs> at the game if y'all can't catch a ball? Can't see if the little girl can get a teeth. <laughs> get knocked out, bruh. And the dude who hit it said, bruh, he didn't even know about the incident in Curran. He said it's my first game back in action after sitting out <laughs> when the whole oh, 2017 man. season. Nah, so, 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 so it's sort of two victims. So, so he's hurt, <laughs> and now his career and his pride is hurt. Now his first game. Coming back, he done had a moment. He ain't way to live down. And he <laughs> caught the girl in her head, man. That's unfortunate. Uh, poor colonizer. That's oh. mess, mess. Damn, man. <laughs> That's really sad. Uh, yeah, we ain't done no sympathy with white people no more. No. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm, I'm using coded language here. Okay. Poor girl. <laughs> I know the left was a little black kid, honestly. It's uh, true. <laughs> What's funny is the red arrow that you drew on the yes, face. Yes, yes. So unnecessary. <laughs> so because unnecessary. saying she got hit in the face is a fine. It's fine because the whole face. We, we know what the face is, but they're like you want to specifically right. where it hit her. They want you to know the point of impact. And her yeah. mouth is <laughs> wide open <laughs> as the yeah. ball comes Look towards her. On her face, man. That's <laughs> what is that the advocate? That's the advocate. The advocate is very. <laughs> That's what's going on out here. <laughs> Jay Still, what you got? What's going on out here? So, um, it's Lent. <laughs> it's Lent. Or whatever. Get and Lent. that's cool, but uh not everybody in the city is Catholic. But it's a New Orleans tradition for on Fridays. You eat seafood what do you mean when it's not Lent, I feel like that's the thing. Yep. So what I've done which was a lovely idea from Oshun. Um, through Fat Girl Nola is I am compiling a list of different seafood plates and fish plates that you can get in New Orleans. Plates? Like people who do whole separate plates? The ones that I found are mainly restaurants. I'm trying to find more like people that are like independent chefs and, and mm -hmm. people that do it from their house. Like, like, I have I haven't done those yet. I I be asking people on Facebook I like on Fridays like mm -hmm. where to get the fish place from and I always get some great suggestions. But like I like I like where you're going with this. Um, so I have a couple of good ones. The full list we're not done yet is gonna be on Um next Friday. But so far we have Hanks, which is a bar, mm -hmm. uh, at fourteen forty three North Robinson. That's in my hood. So good. And what I like that they do is they have the seafood baked potatoes. It's not your traditional fried fish plate, which they do do fried fish, I think, or fried seafood every now and then. But I had the seafood potato, and it's this really big, I think it's a couple of potatoes, it looked like. And they basically um, cut them down the middle, and it has, like, this really good seafood sauce. It's, like, shrimp and uh, crawfish and, I think, crab sometimes. It was amazing. Mm. Then there's Tasty Treat Food Truck at 5000 Old Gentilly Road, and they have a buffalo shrimp sandwich that is so 
good. And they also have their fried fish, but they serve it over a shrimp pasta with crawfish sauce on top. That's really good. Um, another one that's really, really good is actually at Whispers on the Lake. Oh, you been? You went to Whispers? You went yeah. out to the east for, yeah. for some seafood? Um, Whispers on the Lake, and it's called the Catfish St. Charles, and it's like a potato oh, cake. Oh, And they put the fried fish on top with the corn mechu, with the sauce. crawfish. It's so mm, good. That's a good one. Then right next door, not too far, they have cast net seafood. You can get like your traditional fried plates. They have, of course, Ray's on the Avenue. They have the five dollar fish place that they do. Do they still wait on or not? Because Ray's has moved from the San Bernardo location to uh, down the corner of North Claiborne and Basin. Mm -hmm. They still mm -hmm. doing the same, the same. Yeah. Fried nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Seven fourteen. Seven fourteen North Claiborne. Then nice. the one that I'm really, really excited about. Well, actually, before that one. Heard that kitchen was one that I tried, but when I had it, I was a little... What is it? Mm -hmm. Um, That's not the right address. Heard that? Yeah, heard that kitchen. That's not the right address. I'm going to find it. But they have something called the Mighty Grand Mambo, which is like a fried catfish filet. And then they put a crawfish sauce on it, and they serve it with potato salad. Then they also have a mm. shrimp and crawfish salad that is like ridiculously good. The one I'm really excited about, one of my actor friends, shout out to him, has a bar called Carmucha's Rock Bottom Lounge at 3801 Chapatula Street. And every Friday, free catfish plates. What? Free? Free. free. You should have said that, you should have told us that over, over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so wait, so he on Chapatula, they do free catfish plates? He wants me to bring like a group of people and you know, he's going to show love, but it's free regardless. What's That's the, the one I'm really excited about. Carmucha's? Carmucha's That's Rock Bottom I'm... Lounge. And according to Facebook, Heard That Kitchen is at 2520 Felicity Street. Yeah. As I found to, huh? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to try out Carmucha's and Heard That Kitchen real soon. And if you have, you know what a fish plates be popping. Let us know. Let yeah, us well, know. Um, so we Natasha, tell. Chef Butler, her fish plate when we had it that one time was real good. Uh, that lady, Pretty Bee's Home Cooking, who did oh, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the stuffed, um, stuffed catfish. And then your boy on the West Bank. I'm, I'm going to give it to him. Marlon Chicken Mall Williams. Um, that catfish plate that he gave us was well worth the drive. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make sure we put some more uh, local independent chefs mm -hmm. on that thing. You heard me? Fat girl food. And if you want to see the full list with pictures and all that kind of stuff, like I said, it's going to be up next Friday on fatgirlnola.jimdo.com and also on Instagram at what's the, what's the website? That gym? With a G. Jimdo. Jimdo? Fatgirlnola.jimdo. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. They're going over to I'm on it, and that's what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. That's what else you got, man. What's going on out here? Um, so, uh, apparently, rest in peace, Mr. Oba. Yeah, well, uh, well, um, what else you got? Okay. Uh, my, my next thing is so drastically different, but, yes. um, Stormy Daniels, who was banging, uh, President Trump, your president, not mine, apparently, uh, she is free to release her, uh, her personal information on Donald Trump. That happened out yet? Not the memoir. Oh, she from she here. She from here. Stormy from here. Yeah, she really? is. Oh, yeah. I've heard that before. She's a local. Mm -hmm. Hurricane Stormy Daniels. She called it something. Like oh, that. she's yeah. clever with it. Yeah. Clever. Yeah. Clever. Yeah. So what she did with him? I mean, apparently, she, man. I mean, she she. She she uh basically she got six figures to a uh, personal money to keep on the hush hush that they was well, doing and the but oh mm -hmm. sex is six sex figures sex worth of doing it no, though she better, but... she better sting him for all the money she can get <laughs> why what I mean, else she first brought it up in 2011 I think she come uh, plan on writing a book because uh yeah she did not get in complete detail she says more to come basically but like yeah you know she finally about to take that muzzle off but what's tripping me out is the fact that we got a president with all these allegations and he's still chilling but right they they. They hopped on Bill for so much less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dig, it is just it's Obama a trip. Obama couldn't get away with a third <laughs> a, of a, a, mm -mm. A, any fraction nope. of any of this that this man is. See, when Bill started playing that saxophone, you know, hustle Marsalis, mm. pick up the pieces. Yeah. That's yeah. why he did. Yeah. 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 Obama really had to be Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Crazy. Tried his hardest. He really did. Whoa. Oh, and shouts out uh, when Dixie might be going bankrupt. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw that coming. Whoa! Everybody saw that. Damn. I mean. Because no. they started shutting them down too many. Yeah. yeah, the one on Chef had closed, right? Um, yeah. The one on Chef and Gentilly Chef, but not, they still got the other one. The way done in the Yeah. East, yeah. But, yeah, they... I've been using Rouse's anyway. I was about to say, they won't be missed. They're too expensive. Well, they, the chain will close almost 200 stores as part of a restructuring. Yeah. 200 whole stores? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Can y'all can shop local the whole I know we you know y'all don't gotta get no meat package deals. I can still get that from like asking. This is true. They just opened that Robert's on St. Claude, you know. Oh really? I ain't been there yet. Yeah. And yeah, it's open. Oh. A friend of mine, uh Chill, he said he had a bad experience with the people following him around the store there. Chill to be DJing tonight and every shadow day at the pink room at the high school lounge. He said that they follow him around. Mm. So it's a must we got a shout out to do that. Uh, also tonight, what's going on out here is uh, Pass It On. It's happening at the Axiom Art Gallery tonight. Check him out there on Ferret. My boy Malik will be in that thing. Shout out to Malik, man. He he's usually uh, here. He said he's free, so he might be on the way. He might be on the way, Malik. Okay, well, we shot him out anyway, man. That's the <laughs> homie. Um, he getting that work. Mastermind, what's going on out here, man? What, what you got? Like what? Guess what, y'all? We jam. February the 23rd through February the 25th is the Vietnamese New Year Festival. It's, it's going to be at the Mary Queen uh, of Vietnam Tet, right? Church. <gasps> what? Going Tet? Yeah, it's going to be at the Mary Queen of Vietnam Church. I was like, Tet? Like, cross the river? Yeah. Tet. But um, it's going to be there. There's it's 5069. Mm -hmm. Willowbrook Drive at the Wallace East at 7129. <laughs> it's going to be the biggest Vietnamese festival in. New Orleans this year, so go down there and get lots of food. I, I love will. Vietnamese I will. food. I, I will. love it. Yep, I remember. No, that. Yep. no. Oh, no. That girl Nola does need to go. Yeah. She's gonna do Vietnamese that. Vietnamese food is so. And then everybody. Speaking of uh, Vietnamese and in the East, we saw a girl, um, a councilwoman Cindy, Cindy Wynn. Wynn. We saw Miss Cindy Wynn at the um, at the Black Panther event. Yep. Yeah, man, so I was going to actually shout out the uh, Vietnamese community in the city. Um, would somebody had asked me, somebody out of town had asked me, uh, like, where could I get a really good king? Like, they were trying to get one shipped to them out of town. Really good king cake from And I was like, don't fall. At, at the time, mm -hmm. that's what I thought was the best. Uh, and he was like, man, I, w I was thinking that, you know, why would... He, he made some kind of racial slur and was like, I'm surprised that XYZ is known for the king cakes. I thought you would have to go from like mom and pop and TT. And I was like, no, yeah, no. mom and pop and TT. I was right, right. right. Now that I think about it, in the world of the Vietnamese, they, you know, we go to them for seafood. Mm -hmm. We go to them for fried chicken. Mm -hmm. We go to them, they, I'm not surprised they can do good king cakes. They kind of, a, a lot of them, like I went to Sarah Tiri for a year, a lot of the Vietnamese population in this city have ingratiated themselves yeah. with, uh, with the people of color. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I don't, I actually don't feel much tension I not I ain't gonna say it don't happen because you know Reese Seafood had their thing, but yeah, I, I feel like mom and pop stores. If I walk into a, a Vietnamese owned one in the hood, um, I kind of I'm not late to them a bit. I'm surprised. I mean, if you're growing up in the hood, most of your corner stores gonna be run by you know mm -hmm. some Vietnamese people. Most likely, like, I feel like if unfortunately doing, at times too. If you're doing crawfish, uh, if it ain't cast net, I hope you're Vietnamese. Like. If it ain't yeah. Cajun, it better be the Vietnamese right. or Cajun. It's or not like right. they're a part of our community, man. We all, yeah, we all are this, this, this is a gumbo pot of right. a city, man. It, that's ridiculous thinking. So we will be at the Vietnamese. I'm going to the Vietnamese the Tet Festival because I remember celebrating Tet at, uh, at McMain in high school, and they gets down. They get all and the way down. Is, uh, and uh, I remember having a fried banana, actually. It's probably the one thing I had at the, uh, the, the VFS. So I'm looking forward to that, man. That's what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. oh, what else you got, Bass? What's going on? Um, This... <laughs> This uh this this story I'm only can only can speak on a bit of it but uh, there's a story out basically about how local sheriffs are going to be receiving money for housing state prisoners because they're getting this chunk of 260 million dollars possibly more to um uh, they're, they're claiming that they're getting this money to help reduce our tagline because you know Louisiana is known as you know we we just, we the highest in the world for incarceration our incarceration rate in the world in Gretna. As a matter of fact, has the highest incarcerations in Louisiana across the board. So they're trying to um, start ser start like services for uh, state inmates housed in local jails, um, like um, educational program and drug treatment, vocational skills, and other services. And they want to start um, treating that, start uh, upgrading the local jails to be like state prisons because apparently, also in New Orleans, I mean, uh, also in Louisiana, um, most of our state prison population, we 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 house like. 
state prison and a local jail ain't supposed to function in the same in the same manner. And about 55 percent of the state inmates are held the state inmates are held in local jails as of September 2017, compared to 15,000 in state facilities. So once someone's convicted of a crime that includes a prison sentence, they become a state inmate. But in most other states, jails only hold persons local jails only hold post persons awaiting trial or criminal charges, not those serving like legit hardcore sentences. So they're trying to put the money into the local jails, upgrade the local jails so you can treat it like um, state jails, and hopefully also, uh, I, I, they, I, they seem like they're trying to say rehabilitate um, um, the inmates of uh, prisoners, but like I just have this weird like, feeling about all that stuff, because the fact that they make $24 a day off of each state inmate already make my nerves bad, the fact that you make money off human beings. And most times our prison system has failed us, and they don't want to admit that, but it has. And there's no re there, there's, there's that's a whole other wormhole. But like, yeah, Sheriff's about to get a pay increase off of the inners in jail. But hopefully they do right by them and do the things that they're saying they're doing. Sound like they're going to be doing renovations on the plantation. Now, that's, that's what it sounds like. That's basically, what it sounds like. Basically, that's exactly what it sounds like. I guess that's what's going on. Oh, shit. Jay, still, you got another one? Speaking of being on? on a plantation. No, oh, no, 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 no please no. don't let it be a segue. Let's take what? it back real quick. No, this is actually really good. Ironically enough, Monday on President's Day is actually the one year anniversary of Get Out coming out in theaters. Really? It's been a whole year? It's been really? a whole year. Wow. Um, and as we know, the film is nominated for Best Director. And best actor, best actor, and best picture. original screenplay too mm -hmm. for the Oscars. So what's happening is that AMC Theaters is having a fr having free get out screenings all across the nation really? at select theaters, but it's only one showing that's happening on that day, 7 p.m. And you have to get your tickets the day of. Oh, AMC, yeah, AMC Theaters, and I believe it's happening out here in Elmwood. That's what's mm. happening. Yeah, go see that get out. Okay. I might go see it again. For yeah, free. Sorry, oh, no, for free. Right. One time. That's pretty cool. That's what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you got another one? Yeah, just something like, um, if you guys want to, they are giving, well, they're giving away, but they have free swimming lessons in NORD. NORD centers are, give, are having free swimming lessons for not only just kids, but senior citizens. And they are making this a whole thing before the summer. Because, ironically, people still swim in Lake Pontchartrain. Mm -hmm. And they are drowning. No, Wait, what? Do How far out are they going? And they don't even have to be that far out because the current it will pull you down. You can't see in that water. Yeah, but they have the little the little uh, part that's kind of um, sectioned off for waiting. You know do you what remember I'm when about? we were out there? We watched that man swim real far out, and he was taking a bath in that water. Yeah, but he was still within what what they designated as the the waiting pool. But by the for water it. being either way, it was right. nasty. It, it was murky. It was, so knowing how he was bathing, he was oh, right. he was gargling. That's too, that's too much. It was he oh, was rinsing his mouth out and everything. I swear he was. I'm like, sir, that's not that's no not way cool. in the world do they you do that's that with cool. salt water from Lake Pontchartrain. But please check the Nord website because they have not only the Treme pool, but they have the one in the Sanchez Center. They also have yoga, water aerobics. They have all kinds of things that'll help you be more comfortable in the water to prepare your bodies for summer. If you do decide you want to swim in Lake Pontchartrain, which is not my mm -mm. thing, yeah, no. I mean I'm not going in there. But if that's the boat you want to float on, then I'm done. Boom! I'm all right. I'm going to go ahead and listen. I'm giving it to you. Right here, right? Hey, you guys, you guys, make sure you check the Nord calendars because they started already. Get in there, have fun, and go for a swim. Okay. That's what's going on out here. I think that's about all. Unless Mastermind, you got some more what's going on out here? You got anything else? Uh, well, something I'm just saying. Apparently there's something called Eat Nola Noir. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Did you talk about that last week or something? We did. Oh, okay. we, briefly. Very briefly, though. Time? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> or was I? I can't remember. I'm so busy. I don't know. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a black, like a New Orleans black restaurant week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's what Jesse's restaurant is. Mm -hmm. um, that's where it was featured on. What restaurant? Sassafras. Remember we said that? Oh, right, that? right. We talked about that. Yeah, uh, Sassafras. I didn't know this. It's apparently, Sassafras has some historical value. The restaurant Sassafras on Franklin. I know it used to be in the East. That's about it. That's we history. We too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they, they, apparently they have them publicized somewhere as being like... One of the black restaurants you have to check out when you come to the city. That's what's up. Check out Sassafras. So. Um, 
And that's pretty much all we got for what's hmm. going on out here, y'all. Stop all this killing, man. I'm number one on Nola.com early looking for stories and stuff. And I felt like I saw so many stories yeah. of people getting shot, yeah, people getting shot, did. people getting shot. We need to come together as a city. I don't know if it's whether you pray, whether it's positive energy, whatever it is, man, we got to do better. Because that was so depressing. Yeah. I say I'm not even going to pick none of them because there's so freaking yeah. many. Right. So freaking many, dude. So I'm just saying... I'm not trying to put on a dower note. I'm trying to look at it as a positive thing of let's come together. Just how well, this Black Panther of. movie came out and all this one city's movies and all this. And I hate when they say, if you could do this, you could do that. I'm not saying if you could do this, you could do that. I'm just right. saying, since we did this, let's do that. You feel me? So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm too much of an empath. I couldn't, I couldn't get into it read too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's too um, many. Mm -hmm. And I was having a good week, but apparently the whole city, the mm -hmm. world, didn't necessarily have the best week. Uh, so that's what's going on out here, y'all. Stay prayed up, stay safe, and love on somebody. Mm -hmm. Love on somebody. This next segment here on the Misbelief Radio Show, ain't nobody finna get no love right here. No. Not during this next segment. Nah. Because <laughs> during this segment here, hmm. I let our resident rebel go unbridled huh. and smack somebody on the back of that neck. Huh. Because they deserve it. Huh. For doing some FS. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so, Bats, huh? who are you smacking on the neck this week, my brother? All right, man. So, today, man, we got we got some for the black hand side. We got some for the white hand side. I'm going to get the black hand side out the way first. On the black hand, hand side, I want to shout out black, contr black contrarians. Those people that for no matter what, no matter what we do, man, if you if you represent black people, then they hate you. If you don't represent black people, then they hate you. If we come together for the community, it's a problem. If we don't come together for the community, it's a problem. They the type of cats, bro, they'll ejaculate and be mad. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm getting so tired of, like, it, it, it happened so much during the Black Panther situation of uh, people, instead of seeing this as a light, as a way to come together, as a way to really be free and just just have fun. Let's, can't we enjoy things? There were so many people coming out with, like I said earlier, well, why y'all worried about this movie? You could be worrying about the black-on-black -black crime and everything that happened to your grandma last night that you didn't know about or whatever. And I'm like, come on, y'all. Can we please, can we please know that we can multitask, you feel me? I don't I don't believe in throwing no negativity to something positive. Like I said earlier, that little girl saw herself in that film and she was overjoyed. I saw women at freaking theater looking at powerful women come together and fight and they were they, they tears in the eyes. You feel me? It's, it's so many impactful things that came from that movement that when I that, that that's that's a movement that you can call Black Panther that when I look at different other things, I'm like, wait a minute. There've been all kind of events over the years I can I, I can recall that black people was happy, they said we gonna do it, and there's that section of people like me, 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 we just always got some damn crap to say. So no black contrarians, you get the the black hand side, the black hand side of the, of the, of the next side, the next situation. <laughs> See, he hit the button too early because I still got some for the white hand side, but the black hand side, that's what you get. Now the white hand side, man, I want to get it as you know, like deep. You know, DC was just saying about how there's a whole bunch of crazy things going on in this world that was all messed up. And the one everybody been talking about, of course, is the shooter, the lady shooter that came out and did all those tra tragic, terrible things. And you would think that I'm about to give him the neck, but I'm not going to give him the neck because when you do stuff like that, that's beyond the neck. Man. He needs a chair. He needs the chair. <laughs> you dig? But what I will give a neck to is the white media that apparently has no shame whatsoever in keeping this same cycle of bullcrap going on whenever one of these white shooters come up and kill a bunch of people. They get to be the ones... The statistics show that the number of mass shootings in the United States between 82 and 2017 by race and ethnicity of shooters between that time, 55 out of 95 mass shootings were initiated by white shooters. 64% of shootings happen by white males. Most of the freaking shootings that happen in schools are by white males. This is a white people problem that y'all got to deal with, but every time that it happens, y'all want to go, oh, he had mental problems. Oh, let's humanize him. Oh, let's see what went wrong. But when we get killed, when we get shot, you bring up our criminal records. Mm. When we do things that are good, if, 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 if a felon saves somebody, if a former felon saves somebody's life, the news story would say, ex-felon saved life mm. instead of a person saved the life. But when y'all got something going on, it's always, oh no, what made him destroy 50 million people? And then you got your other people. And when we say the white media, I'm also talking about the fact that in America, we got the highest, the highest shooting rates of shooting murders in the world. You feel me? Now, you can say what you say about guns and guns rights and everything of that nature, but you got to be stupid. You got to be insane like Einstein say if you can't see that we have to change something. 
All these all these pro gun people be like, don't blame a gun, don't blame a gun. I'm not blaming an inanimate object, but you can't tell me that the power associated that goes with anybody operating that weapon, nothing but d d damage comes. You feel me? If I don't I don't see a knife or a stapler could be a weapon, but I don't see a stapler twenty killing twenty people, leaving bodies on bodies on bodies. It's too easy to get them. Fifteen year olds can get guns. Eighteen like anybody can get a freaking gun and they barely check you. You feel me? So when you but I still go back to the white media for making is so seductive and making it seem like especially if you're a white male I can do things and nothing will happen to me anyway you feel me it's this Rambo complex we got you so when I look at that when I look at the black hand side I get at you contrarians for this week when I look at the white hand side y'all got a lot of work to do to say we the thugs to say that we the monsters to say that we got all these problems wrong with us in our community but I can't think of the last black shooter that shot up a freaking school you feel me? I can't think, I, it's, 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 and I'm not trying to make it a white and black thing, but this country makes it a white and black thing every time that we see how different you treat y'all terrorists. So yeah, y'all get that neck, that neck, that neck, and we get the button, we got the button all up and down the place because this makes no sense. It don't make no sense, y'all. Like, like Einstein said, you can only do the same thing over and over and expect different results and not be considered insane. You feel me? So we got to do better. We got to do better. I like the idea of there being a neck on the black hand side and the white hand side. So I like that too. I like it. You're going to carry that on? Like, I mean, if, if black people and white people keep <laughs> tripping <laughs> <laughs> the same week. <laughs> you feel I like me? It. Nice, man. That was that neck, man. Because we don't it's show favoritism. Sure don't, man. Because black folk and I. I I was cool with the black contrarians. I mean, I feel like the, the white media could get that neck every, every week. day. <laughs> yeah, every week. Always. But the black contrarians, like, now ain't the time. It's really not. They didn't want us to live. They didn't want us to live. all up in your... I feel like black, black guilt is a real thing. It's like they got people out here that are guilty about being black because, you know, people play the race card and people don't want to be seen as victims and such. So it seems like there's always these people that come out whenever we trying to come together and be like, look, I'm not trying to be one of them, one of them woke in this. I ain't trying to be like one of these people that always get easily right. offended. And they, they get so crazy with that stuff that they don't realize that you're doing the enemy's job for him. Anytime you tear down a fellow black person, you doing the enemy's job for the enemy. So stop with that nonsense. Think oh, positive. Anyway, yo, so that was that neck. He turns us up. And then as always, our Sankofa birds like to turn us down. Our Sankofa session is where we, as young millennials, pause and take a look back at something that came before us to make us who we are today. So yes. soon. Look back at it. <laughs> what you get? Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to talk about Mr. Arthur Robinson. And I know you're looking at me like, who in the H is Arthur Robinson? That is the one and only Mr. Okra. Mr. Okra. Mm. Who is a New Orleans, who was a New Orleans legend and icon. Mr. Okra started actually selling fruit and vegetables, not it wasn't in the 50s and 60s. This current Mr. Okra, a lot of people don't know that his father was the original Mr. Okra who actually started selling fruits and vegetables out of a wheelbarrow. Mm. Mm. And then that wheelbarrow transformed into a horse and buggy. And then that horse and buggy transformed into a pickup truck. And that is the truck that we're used to seeing. Nice. But when he first started peddling, he didn't have like that fancy truck that he had now. He was actually walking the streets. He was known as the last peddler. Mm. They have a lot of people who are selling fruits and vegetables, but they were the only ones riding around Mr. Okra was. When his heart, when his health started declining, he took his daughter out with him, and they was actually driving together, and she was actually taking over. Now, she says she's going to take over now since he's been deceased. He died Thursday, and he was 75 years old, which is amazing because when you think about it, I was like, Mr. Oprah was only 75, and then I asked my grandma, she was like, well, that can't be right, because I remember him selling when I was a young girl. So that made me look into him, and I realized he is the second. Mm. So the first Mr. Oprah is who we know who started, I got peas, I got one of them. That's who we're used to hearing that voice. Mm. He said he copied his daddy's raspy voice when he got his intercom system. He said, my daddy used to yell out the window. But I got fancier, and I put it on top of the truck. Yeah. So that is the voice that we're used to hearing. Mr. Robinson will be missed not only for the nourishment that he provides to our community, but 
his friendly nature. Mm-hmm. He was the most friendliest guy. He had painted on his truck, be nice or leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you did not have the money to pay him, he knew who you were. He knew who your parents were. He knew who your grandparents were. So he would be like, it's okay, baby, pay me next time. You don't have mm-hmm. to worry about it. That's the New Orleans treasures that we are losing. Right. And it's sad because when you think about our community, a lot of things that we have are diminishing. A lot of traditions that we have, we are losing. And that brought me back to Wakanda. Uh, okay? Right. And uh, the colonizers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the things that they're doing. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Robinson, we salute you. Miss Ignora, we will see you on that route, baby. They are also raising money to help bury Mr. Uh, Okra. As soon as I find <coughs> the link, I will be happy to share it with you guys. Share it yeah. As soon as I find that link, I'll be happy to share it with you guys just to try to marry the man with decency and the love that he has given to us over these years. You know what I like about um, that the legend of Mr. Oprah is that it is the same thing as the legend of Marie Laveau, that there was one who lived a full lifetime, and then uh, when she passed, she passed silently in her home, in her bedroom, and her daughter, whose name was also Marie Laveau, Mm -hmm. um, took over wearing her mother's clothes and her her mother's practice. She already had her mother's name and looked like her mom, so the legend of Marie Laveau was that she lived for two lifetimes, Mm -hmm. when in reality it was one and then a second one. Just like Mr. O'Brien. Right, and it's amazing how... We, as our generation, the millennials, we didn't know the difference. Yeah, no, we didn't. Right. We didn't. But, right. but I can imagine somebody like you, like, your grandma was like, no, <laughs> right. he was 75. Because, right. I mean, I was young. He, he was, was old. You right, know, so, right. Yeah, that's a... That's how I like that those legends. I, I'll be you know what I think we're gonna we're gonna make the legend of Mr. Obra that he lived to be he lived two whole lifetimes. So where can we sorry. put his monument? Because we got Leah Chase Circle. <laughs> what else they didn't took down? Miss, where Mr. Okra gonna go? Mm-hmm. They should mm-hmm. name an open air uh, fresh market after Miss Okra. A real one. Yeah. A real right. one. Mm-hmm. I think I think a chocolate sand gonna do that to us. I was oh, about he's to say already that done too. that to us. I think, think he has I done that. Don't think so. Because Dude, chocolate sand been like looking our, along our the way. Our parents got pictures with this yes. man. Yeah. I thought about that too. Somewhere along the way, he switched them out. Something going on. Something. Mr. Dennis, what's going on with chocolate? Sand? I know you know. <laughs> yes, they vibrating. I know. They vibrating keeps him young. All right, so I think we probably this is this has been another episode of the Misbelief Radio Show, you guys. A really, really good one. Yeah. Um, if you tuned in in the middle of the end of the show, don't fret. Subscribe to the podcast at themisbelief.podbean.com or watch the Facebook Live video as soon as it ends. You get to see all the behind-the-scenes antics. We've been having so much fun here. I love my co-hosts. I love our guests. Thanks to John LeCarbier for coming through. Uh, thanks to Jay Booker from Crowns Corporation, JB. Um, and my co-hosts are so awesome. Who's this to my right side? Hi, everybody. It's me, Oshu. Shut up. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me at Oshun, SL11 on the Instagram, or Oshun Lilith. On the Facebook and join me in Wakanda. Mm-hmm. And who's this to my left side? It's that actor guy Martin Bats Bradford. You can find me on all your social <laughs> media platforms at Mr. Bats. Spell that Mr. Out of You ain't gonna find me. And also subscribe to the Fly With Bats podcast at flywithbats.podbean.com on all iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. And check us out, all our films and shorts and such on Gumbo Monster 5 on 4 found at YouTube. Uh-huh. Who's that to your left side? It's Jay still keeping it real. Y'all Shut up. up. <laughs> Rude. You can follow me on Instagram at imjsteel underscore. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at my food blog at Fat Girl Nola. Mm-hmm. Who's in the booth? This is Boy Mastermind. You can check me out also on the Fire Pass podcast and everywhere else on the internet as French Break underscore kid. Yo, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm DC Paul, the millennial senior. And Take shut up. <laughs> Forever. Forever. What Check time? me out at who is DC Paul on all social networks and who is DC Paul.com. Check me out this Monday here on WBOK AM 1230 and every weekday from 7 to 8. Oh you can God. call if you've ever been hearing me and I've offended you, call me at 504 260 <laughs> Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Call me. Talk to me. I would love to hear Man, from you. Man, get D.C. together. I hope they have a yeah, segment yeah, no, that no, comes no. called Get D.C. Together. I hope we get some more calls from the West Bank. That would be awesome. Man, but D1 is sitting with me on my, my first episode on Monday, so that will be great. You guys can call in and ask D1 some questions. Apparently, he paid Sally Maybach. 
Hey, hey, Sally hey, Mick. Hey, that's hey, a, that's hey. and that's a legendary thing to that's do. Goal, <laughs> Let's talk about yo, Wakanda. Yo, huh? if y'all got excited, <laughs> listen. I ain't paid Sally May back. I don't know if Sally May's ever gonna earn money from me, honestly. I'm waiting for uh, I'm waiting for him to leave it alone. You know, they keep on trying to fight to get him to drop all that school debt. I'm, I'm just hoping I can wait it out until they do it. Or they can just re reclaim his degree. I'm, I'm fine with that. Hey, they can have it. Reclaiming, reclaiming his degree. Who needs it? Right. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, 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 I don't. I, 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 I love you, DU. Yeah. <laughs> We got another minute, you know. We, we got a whole minute. Oh, yeah. We never yeah. have a whole minute. I, 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 tried to, I tried to end early so that we could play a song at the end, but I was like, no, we just had some fun, man. So, uh, play the rest of right Brian, here, so. Brian, our, uh, our producer, beautiful Brian, he, uh, I was going to put him on the mic, but I don't know what to say. Uh, he's looking for an intern, you guys. He's a very talented and smart dude. His name is Brian Eaglin. Uh, I'm going to set him up on a date. He has beautiful skin. What he's else? very nice. He always buys me things. What else? And he's, he's a great listener. He's, he's a, a very, very great listener. listener. That's important. I was having a very good, horrible, bad day today. And he listened. See? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to do it. Okay. Somebody <laughs> better listen because I was, I was right there in your bed probably. <laughs> and, then, and I was just ignoring you. All right, you guys. It's 9 o'clock. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in to Ms. Believe Radio Show. Don't get nothing on you. That's simple. <laughs> <Been like. laughs> How you gonna tell them people I was right in your bed, and then you gonna tell them, listen. I have my coat on the floor. <laughs> Her coat fell on the floor. She was mad about it. <sighs> I get tired of talking sometimes. You do? When is that? <laughs> Are we gonna get weed? Is that my What is it, weed? And apparently, Esplanade Food Store is racist. Yeah, man, I was sitting what outside happened? of that place on Mardi Gras. They should have had a bad experience. Yeah, seeing him calling some nigga a nigga. And he wasn't a nigga. You feel me? Oh, that's what we used to get hot chip from when we went to 35. Yep. Right there on North Hillary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Real talk for real time. Yeah. Okay, yo, let's close it down. We only got one, one viewer. Who's that watching? Who's that watching? How do you tell who's watching? Press the one plus one. Oh, this is my phone. <laughs> it says one plus. The one plus says what? It'll tell you what it is. No, it don't. Well, it usually does. Who's that watching? Tell me who's watching. We're going to say goodbye to all the people. Come on, come say goodbye to all the, the millions and millions of watchers, <laughs> listeners, and fans that we have. <laughs> it's actually millions. You know, millions of people are watching you right now. What you got to say? What do you say to the millions of people who are watching? You look like little, little, oh, oh my little god. <laughs> he wish. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. Come on, come on out here and say bye to the people. Okay, no? All right. Uh, well, you guys, this has been another episode. Before That's Brian. Before the two years for me to bye. become a teenager, I said. You're going to be a, a, a teenager in two years? Are you 11 already? I'm turning 11. Oh, okay, yeah, it's 2018. Okay, all right. They apparently have each other's back. My man Daryl, so Daryl. I have somebody in mind for you. Did I tell you that already? Okay, I'm, I was serious about that, man. I was serious about that. Stay single just for until until her relationship break up. And then... Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, because it ain't, ain't going to last. The one she in right now ain't gonna last as long as you just stay out of as stay out of it. I'm telling you, I found I found one for you. That's what we doing. I found one for you. She she needs you and you need her. We're waiting for the two I ain't say her name. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm waiting for she's with a fuck nigga. I'm waiting for him to pr prove <laughs> oh, himself. No. I'm waiting for him to prove himself as a fuck nigga, and then bam, slides you right in there. You heard me. So we be being patient together. You heard me. We we trusting and believing in God. <laughs> that this, yeah, I said he didn't commit to nothing. I'm just saying. You know I mean? After the camera turned off, I'll tell you what he told Daryl about me. Oh. After, but I mean, <laughs> this is what he's talking about. No, I'm going to tell you what he told me. Turn it off. Soon. Turn it off. Okay, you guys. In a minute, I'm going to, oh, across the street to the Seahorse Saloon to holler at Geneva and Young Funny. There's a comedy show happening every Saturday right across the street. Bye, y'all. Uh, Geneva was texting me.